Okay, I think we're ready. Are we ready? Our tchotchkes are in place. Every tchotchke. Check, 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 check. Check, check to the tchotchkes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, you that's the show. That thing. I'm going to tell you like you tell me. Don't just pull on it. You got to loosen the arm first. Rude. Now the shoe is on the other foot. How does it feel? <sighs> it's a little tight. Like it doesn't fit. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Opinions That Don't Matter. I'm Sean. And I'm Katie. And we're here to rock your socks off. Ooh, that's, yeah. that makes it sound way more exciting than it probably is. Have you ever seen those old dance contests back in the 60s or 50s? They, they do like contests. The contests. Did you have a hard, <laughs> hard time saying it? Mm-hmm. I was just trying to enunciate. Oh, okay. Yep. Speak I've been accused clearly. of not speaking clearly. By who? The masses. Oh. <gasps> I see you writing those comments. I don't either. Anyway, okay, like, so you know, dance contest. Yeah, like the sock hop, or mm-hmm. <clears throat> even that came out funny. The sock hop, mm-hmm. uh, but they'd have dance contests, like how long can you dance for, and the oh, last yes. person on the dance floor wins. Well, remember, we, we should were enter watching, one of those. You don't even like to dance. I would dance one of those. Okay, but remember um, when we're watching Cheers? What's Tortelli? His his name I forget. Hey, Carla, Nick well, Tortelli. Nick. Okay, so there's Carla and Nick, and they would do those. They yeah. were like the best dancers. That's right. And they would, you know. Anyway, I thought that was really fun. There was an era where couples would dance, and I'm sorry that I'm not that couple for you, Katie. I I uh, love to dance. You know this. I know. I and do. I love to dance. So if any of you out there want to dance with my wife, the answer is no. <laughs> but you know, I wish I had uh, feet that could. My friend, my friends like to dance. You know, it's funny because. So you don't like to dance and I like to dance. And Joanna, my friend Joanna, does not like to dance. And PJ, her husband, loves to dance. And it's like we always get paired up. Abba loves to dance. Jesse, not so much. So I just hang out with, you know, my friends that like to dance. When I was a younger person, a teenager, Mm -hmm. when you go to the high school dances, I really liked to dance then. I felt free. So what happened? Judgment? Yeah, I think judgment sent in. Or sent it. Set? Set. Set there's in. no N in that word. No, there's no scent in there. It's like <laughs> when people screw up and they say they type loose instead of lose, or they mix them up yeah. in speaking. Choose or chose. Yeah, but lose and loss is two completely separate things. But people will spell them, I find, in emails, you know, the screw ups. Oh, it's just typos. Yeah. But there's also misspeak, like the way that people miss, I don't know, pick the wrong word sometimes. Sure. Like we were just on the call where um, our friend kept picking the wrong word. Oh. It and happens. I, like, I do it, it happens. for about two hours every podcast. Well, I don't like to call people out either because I know what they mean. He was talking about um, making things clear and legible, but he kept kept saying eligible. I ah. was like, you don't mean that, but I know what you mean. So we're just going to move along. Wow. Nobody likes somebody being like, ah, ah, da, da, da. Yeah, I was wrong. A grammar nerd or a uh, an English nerd? Yeah, I mean. A language it, nerd. Both of those, I think, can be a little too much for people, although... I will be honest, if if you and I were like texting when we first started dating and you kept using the wrong there or, you know, that stuff would get to me and I'd be like, I think he's an idiot. You'd be like, what else is he screwing up yeah. at in life? Yeah. I text very poorly. So it's like we, a I dream mean, book at half the time with like <laughs> uh, all sorts of emojis. That's and not true. You're, you're, we just don't, we're not that couple that I don't text a lot with you. I can go days without checking my phone for texts. I don't know why, but that is the least you don't check your phone thing. for that stuff ever, but you're always on your phone. It's just a very interesting. I read a lot. Yes, and Sean reads a lot of news, and he you you do talk a lot in that one app with your buddies. Oh, hockey chat. Yeah, yeah. His hockey, sure. He's got hockey talk, the honky talk. <laughs> Sean goes to the hockey talk. It's it's pretty interesting. A lot of things yeah. are happening in the world of hockey. We won't get into them, but it is an exciting time of year. Them? No, mm-hmm. we're gonna win the cup next year. See, oh God, here we go. <laughs> Wash, rinse, repeat. Um, Seattle's getting the cra- the Kraken. Yeah, I feel like you gotta say it like that. The Kraken, even though we're not from Boston. Yeah, how would you say it in uh, your talk? The way you speak. There's no, there's no real way to be the Kraken. But if it was the Kraken bag, how would you say it? Kraken bag. Can you say that second word again? No, I've already done it, and it's done. Sean likes to tease me, even now, though they, he has the most ridiculous accent. If they were going to rude. be, uh, if they were going to feature the Kraken, the new hockey team mm-hmm. from. Washington State, right? The mm-hmm. Pacific Northwest. Mm-hmm. If they were going to feature them in a form of media. I know, you want to say magazine. How is that? Magazine. Mm, but that's not how you used to say it when I met you. It was magazine. Well, it's funny because I haven't lived in Washington in how long? I know. More, more, I've lived outside of it 
more than I live in it. It's interesting and, when you're around other people from my mom your... and my aunt came back uh-huh. to visit or not came back, but came here to visit and I could hear it in their language. I heard them say, put the magazine in the bag about seven different times. You did not. Cause they didn't say that, but they did say bag know, and pop. We always said pop and that took forever for me to weed it out. So it was soda. And I still to this day, I don't know why that's one of the hardest things. I don't really care anymore. Now we're in Texas. So I feel like it's a free space, but in California, they're like pop. Where are you from the midwest yeah like, they say it there for sure yeah but we always said it in washington it was always pop so that one is still be- i think because i don't drink pop so i don't say that word very often i just have never enjoyed it by the way it just makes me burpy the you know moment, when you're a so. kid and you eavesdrop on your parents conversations or adult mm-hmm. conversations mm-hmm. one time uh my cousin shane it mm-hmm. was his birthday that was coming up shane or ryan i forget this is which my one m- did i meet ryan Shane? You met Ryan. I thought so. Yeah, yeah. Shane is the older one by, I think, two years. Okay. Uh, anyways, I overheard my mom and uh, my aunt. The two of them were talking about the party, but I, I could only get a, a couple of the words through mm-hmm. the basement door, you know, like I was supposed to be downstairs in the basement mm-hmm. playing or something, but I, I'm listening <laughs> at the door and all I heard was case and pop. And I was like, oh, they're getting a you know, I was so excited. They're getting a case of pop mm. for, for the party. I was like, but this that probably is great. Because I used to thing. love Orange Crush. But I couldn't. Turns out Sean's allergic to the food coloring and it makes him go crazy. Yeah, that the addiction is real. <laughs> Orange Crush and me, I bubble like uh, I'm very effervescent when, mm. when, I, when I have the Orange Crush. Mm-hmm. It is like I could probably beat anyone in the Olympics in any sport at any given moment. You tell me the word, load me up that Orange Crush and I'm ready to jump high jump run you know i'll do all this stuff but that's all he knows how to do so just those the palm things, horse the whatever man network. i'm like oh my god my favorite okay i love the olympics oh wait i, I forgot oh yeah continue Where, your story the pop and the crush and the whatever's so anyways the party happens i'm excited i'm thinking about you know all week case of pop it's, it's gonna be not great what they got mm-hmm. well i get to the party and there, there's some soda but it's more like juice and even though I like juice, I was really looking forward to the pop. Mm-hmm. Orange Crush would be my favorite. Did they have poppers or what was the pop? No, I ended up asking about the case of pop because I was really mm-hmm. asking, You're like, excuse I me, you ask, you ask an adult, you know, hey, is there gonna be a case of pop at the party, you know? Mm-hmm. And my aunt said, case of pop. I said, I heard you guys talking from when I was in the basement. Mm-hmm. And she goes, oh, I went to the case populaire, which is like oh, the bank. not at all the same thing. Yeah, but you say it shorthand, it's case pop, you know? <laughs> oh, gotcha. Yeah, or at least that's how I remember oh, the story. Frank, Frank, the French versus the English makes things very complicated when you're trying to overhear a conversation Especially as a when you're looking for pop, you know, a little bit of soda. When all you really want is some bubbly, bubbly Turns out sugar they're just juice. going to the bank. Well, that happens. When you're throwing a party, you do need money. I know this story is a little anticlimactic. <laughs> We got here for a reason, folks. And it, yeah, it really was. No, but what I was going to say is that I love, so I love the Olympics. Yeah. Oh. But not for the reasons that anybody else would love the Olympics. Not for the competition. Not for you the know the, the athletes or the fashion. No, there's really no good fashion. Not for any of that. Not for the toned youth of the world? No. Okay. I love the Olympics for the ridiculous clips that people put together online of Sports people doing sports things that look ridiculous. Okay. So case in point, one of my favorites, and I shared it on my Instagram stories, so if you don't follow me on Instagram, you're not really missing out. Haha, <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, you're missing out on funny shit like that. Because there were these people who I think do something like sailing. I'm not sure really what it's called, and it doesn't really matter. Somebody put, so when they're hanging off the edge of their sailboat, they like hump the air as a means to help the boat be balanced, I would assume, and go faster. But imagine so they le- someone just hanging off like a half U-shape, so like your feet are on the boat and your body is arched and your hands are reaching, you're stretched all the way out as far as you can where your feet and hands are still, so you're making like a U with your body. And then you're moving, but you're humping the air as you do that. <laughs> and someone put, so there's all these people in a row humping the air. I have to find this clip so we can share it with these people. It's like, boom, boom, boom. It's so ridiculous. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Uh, That's why I love the Olympics. There's been a couple of those that I've shared. There's this guy on TikTok who just, oh, who watches the different Olympic games and just comments like, what is this or whatever? He's like, what are they? So my favorite, so that's my absolute favorite. Close second 
is the speed walkers. Speed walking. I did not know this existed as a sport <laughs> outside of old people at shopping malls getting or their laps I in. I really have to go pee, but it's not really appropriate to run. Oh, yeah. Or like when little kids are told not to run and they, they do that same walk. But it's like like four hours long? I don't know. They're only going two blocks, I but just they're speed walking, so it's, it's a little slow. It's just the funniest looking thing of yeah. all time. Yeah, it's really strange. Anyway. But like Andy Bernard, the, you, your nipples get chafed in those the shirts. Nipple chafing. You're doing this and run, the more, you know? Uh, it's just the sachet the the memes that were created out of this killed me somebody's like when that taco bell hits in the morning mm -hmm. and then somebody was like um when you didn't think spicy food was a bad idea i mean the the the, the jokes the when you finally get out of that meeting that was way longer than they said and you had three cups of coffee <laughs> i mean it's just so stupid and i just i i live for it well i didn't watch any of the olympics and that's a we, lie we watched wrestling well, and part karate. Okay, so this is what I want to get mm -hmm. to. Okay, let's get into it. The ancient sport of mm. kumite. What? I know. I didn't know what it was, so I had to look it up on the computer. Not karate. Well, so here's what happened, man. Here's the deal. <laughs> here's the deal. We completely missed all of the Olympics. Yeah, we watched nothing. One time we were out in a restaurant and it was on the screen in the back, and I was like. It's good. Oh, it's the Olympics. You I know, watched a little bit of synchronized swimming only because it's really funny how they even walk out together. Yeah. Uh, and then they jump in. It's really it's, fun. It's an amazing sport, though. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a lot of great sports out there in the Olympics. Oh, no shame on the sports. I just don't really feel the need to watch it. Yeah. Some of them, it seems like they're, they're seasoned. Like, synchronized <laughs> swimming is a sport of the 80s. You know, that to me, in my mind, that's what it is. It's not a modern sport. I don't, I don't know if it's even the 80s. It wouldn't be like the 60s or 70s. I don't know. It's just, it looks like an older era. I just really era. want one of those caps with the flowers on it. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, so anyway, so Kumite, tell us. Kumite. Mm -hmm. We were, uh, we turned on the TV. Your mom was gone and mm -hmm. we're like, oh, we'll turn on the TV while we're having our breakfast. And on the screen, um, the final day of the Olympics. I'm like, the final day? I was just getting warmed up. I was, I was going to. I honestly didn't even know how long they lasted. I didn't either. It was so crazy the schedule you couldn't really track what was going on i wasn't sure if i was watching live or if it was taped even though everything says live but I'm yeah, like, it said live even though um even the closing ceremonies remember we were talking to that guy when we were sitting at the bar we grabbed pizza and this guy next to us was like oh yeah the closing ceremonies it just ended he's like but it happened it ended yesterday right and it said live and i was like what yeah <laughs> so katie and i have kumite on okay and kumite there is a uh, man fighting another man in what looks to be martial arts yeah, like outfits karate. or judo but or taekwondo. Also, when we turned it on, there was no fighting going on. One guy was like dead on the floor. No, that's not what happened. Oh, that's all I remember. I looked over because you're like, oh my God. And I was like, oh, somebody, is that guy dead? And you, then he, he moved his arm and I was like, he's alive. Yeah. Don't worry. Well, I guess that's the story, folks. Katie just told you what I was going to tell you. <laughs> like there's a lot of buildup. <laughs> well, I turned the channel on to watch my first sporting event in the olympics oh okay here's the build-up oh aside mm -hmm. from the crash in bmx that was good oh we did watch. we did watch we've that. seen some highlights yeah because youtube puts those highlights out yeah and we would watch some of those so we haven't actually watched something through just the devastation the crashes the uh, it doesn't it's people like, crying that's good i love that it's like when you watch American Idol, I don't want to watch the winners at the very end. I want to watch like the first two days. Yeah. I want to watch those people like really just just give me the good stuff. Give me the karaoke gone wrong. That's it. That's I mean, what I want. When I go to watch an NHL game, I can't see all the games. So what I do and what the NHL Highlights. does well. Yeah, they, they show you the compressed game. Give me the game in nine minutes, man. Mm -hmm. don't, you know, I can watch that. Now, if it's the Montreal Canadiens, I'll watch the whole thing. We but do. I don't have time for and every other game. And we watch the highlights later. Just get ready for that. So YouTube was great for showing us the highlights. But what they do is YouTube feeds on the negative energy of people and what they return. Like when you do a query search for Olympics. Fails. You think you'd hurts. see everyone wearing medals and crying and happy. and Nobody But no, what they give you is anymore. blood sweat and tears yeah mm -hmm. people are so that well that was a really so the the kumite apparently which i thought it was karate i'm so confused well that's matter. it so i turn on the tv okay, the last day of the, the olympics mm -hmm. as i turn on the tv there are two men facing each other in an empty stadium which is a little daunting you know it's just always weird i feel bad that nobody was there to the cheer empty them. stadiums yeah creepy i don't well, like it i didn't like it either so these two men are facing off i've already told the story dude oh yeah well <laughs> but I, i'm watching it and 
it it's the first event I'm watching from beginning and beginning to end, and I'm excited. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna finally take a, a chunk out of this Olympic schedule here. That's not true. Well, I'm going to watch one Also, you weren't really sport. watching. You were like kind of watching. I know, like you're I stumbled pretending upon it. that this is like that we sat down. Well, when the, we were like making coffee and I was making eggs and then you were like, "Oh shit." Yeah, so I what looked. happened? The moment between me saying "Oh shit" and and turning on the TV was exactly 35 seconds. <laughs> and these two men in an empty stadium face off in their uh, karate or judo outfits. Kumite. Kumite. <laughs> and the two guys, some guy yells I think it's in Japanese with a flag or something. And, and then the two guys face off and they're going to fight. And one guy hops forward. The other guy hops forward. This is a lot. It's like 30 seconds, Katie. And then all of a sudden, the one guy kicks the guy right in the head. And, and he, he goes down and he is out. Like a fucking ton of bricks. And I was like, oh my God. And that's when you were like, well, what happened? I'm like, look. You and I was know. like, is he dead? And the guy's not dead. He was from Iran, I think, the one that got hit. Iran versus uh, Saudi Arabia. Is that what his, okay. Which I, I was like, wow, that is a showdown if and that a half. Isn't, yeah, if right? that right? Like isn't, yeah. Right, like Iran versus of, mm -hmm. of geopolitical crisis that's happening in the world right now. I mean, in it, the Olympics what if it was the Israelis versus Iran, you know? But instead it was Islam versus another flavor of Islam. Not that that had anything to do with the sport, but they came together. The one guy just kicks the other guy in the head. Well, he the falls thing, over. And then the guy who did the kicking he had to stand there in an empty stadium while this other guy, he's not moving and he's lying on the ground. Well, it's not even that. So it, yes, he's waiting. The guy's lying on the ground or whatever. But the it thing went that on they for were, minutes, the thing that they, you're way too dramatic. It's really not that big of a deal. So the guy is like worried because it's for the gold. The gold. So medal that's the most important the thing is for it's, it's for the gold medal. And since the guy got knocked out, does he lose? because he got knocked out or does because you're not supposed to actually injure anyone when you're doing kumite or karate or whatever. Turns out it's karate. I had to Google it. So, oh, Kumite so, is karate. Oh, I don't know why they Why would you call names. it? Anyway, so the guy in karate, you can kick someone technically in the head, but you shouldn't be doing that to like, it, it's like over and above. It's he was not like, Miyagi-Do. He was more Cobra Kai, exactly. like old school Cobra Kai, not like, the new Cobra yeah. Kai that's nice. S sweep the foot, is that? Sweep the leg. Sweep the leg, Johnny. But yeah. so anyway, he kicked him too hard. They ruled so hard that it was like he was a bad. It was in bad faith, I think. Something like that. It like was like you could touch him like in the head to back him up, like hey, hey, back up. No, you know, it was like unsportsmanlike conduct, essentially. And so he was disqualified, and so he got the silver, and he cried. He the, like wept openly on that stage, and I was like, oh, that really sucks. Empty stadium. And then everybody knows the guy who got the gold, like didn't even fucking win it. The guy got he just took off. like a, ki a kick to the head, and he was carted off in like a, a stretcher mm -hmm. and. When he went down, he didn't move for like a couple minutes. Then he put his he arm like this. I think he got a concussion. Like I think he got a concussion. Got knocked out. Because I saw an interview with him. He took the the the. We didn't know if he was going to the hospital. Like but if he this took guy the gold. He stood on the thing and he said, "All I have is a wicked headache." I don't remember a thing until I was in the the dressing room. Mm -hmm. it's so really crazy. You know, kudos to these guys for laying it on the line. Anyone who performs sports at that level, mm -hmm. the injuries like Lindsey Vaughn, her crash is horrific. The big crash. I don't remember. Anyways, so we have a, a Winter Olympics coming up soon, and I think I'll tune into that one a little more. I mean, maybe. There's a couple that I like. I like the one where they ski, they like cross-country ski, and then they shoot. Oh, yeah. Well, it's just so random. They're yeah. like cross-country ski, and then they all have to get down, and that takes forever, and that's what fucks them all up is well, the and, shooting. Because you're, you're, you're like pumping, like you're adrenaline. Your heartbeat is physically yeah. making your, your And they arms. usually are like, <sighs> and then they try, and you're like, good, two words, good luck. Focus the mind, Katie. Oh my God, I'm not an Olympian. Anyway, I don't really, uh, I know I don't enjoy the Olympics. Some of them I do. But um, I don't understand why the Russians are allowed to compete with uh, the fact that they were uh, yeah. banned nationally because of steroids. So I don't understand that ruling where they are allowed to, but they don't play their song or yeah. wear the flag. But anyways, neither here nor there. Who got the most medals this year? Was it us again or is it China or something? Oh, I don't know. See, we don't even know. I know that Iran won a gold medal by getting knocked out. <laughs> <laughs> True. And it was the... I felt bad. What, you know, these but the other guy, the Saudi Arabian guy, it would have been like the first gold medal um, for his country. Oh, Saudi and Arabia did not do well. I don't know if that's like well. ever or if it's like this Olympics, but he was just very, it was very sad. I, I didn't, if I was that, if I was the Iranian that won that, I would have been like, that kind of sucks. I like won by default. Nobody wants a gold medal by default. You want yeah. to be like, I kicked ass. I, I showed up. I did my thing. Fuck yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking this up. So who got the most gold medals? Because I don't mm. even know. 
probably Canada. We probably got a lot of them. Like I'm guaranteed the the most, you know, silver, maybe bronze oh, added it's, up. It's talking about people. Oh. Ugh. Did we have another uh, monster of a human being get like 40 medals and oh, some people don't we, get we any? We beat out China. Oh, good. Thank God. So it was us and then China. Was it getting closer though? So like, we had we... 39 golds, just barely beating out China, which had 38. Ooh. Yeah. Well, you know what's happening? The Winter Olympics are going to be in China. And people are... Seriously? Yeah. Oof. Well, they had the Summer Olympics, remember? And but it comes we... down to who can pay I to know. front the, the whole Olympic experience. China, are we still doing this with COVID? Like people are coming in from everywhere? Just did the, the Summer Olympics. I know. So I'm they're going to do the winter one. Yeah. Are people not able to go? Because in those cities don't make any money. I think it's more about bragging rights for China on a global scale. Because mm -hmm. clearly, fiscally, it's not a, a winner right now. I don't think people are tuning in. Yeah, at I least feel bad in, for Tokyo because it's such a beautiful city and I, so many people would have gone. America wins the most medals in the Olympics mm -hmm. or golds or whatever the medal count is. We did well somehow. Mm -hmm. And yet no one in the country was really tuning in. Like a, NBC's numbers were down. ABC's as well, but they weren't showing the Olympics. So, <laughs> you know, YouTube's I'm sure were up because people were looking at the BMX crash and whatnot. So the point being that mm -hmm. it's going to be in China, uh, the next Olympics. Okay. What I'm worried about is, um, you know, sh showing support to a country that has people in internment camps. Yeah. And, yeah. and I think that we really have to be. Okay. Let's move on. This is depressing. Next <laughs> it's, subject. It's on my mind. <laughs> <laughs> talk, oh, talk about it later. I want to show you something. You're bringing us down. You're killing my vibe. Don't bring me down, down. Ooh. Oh, really? Yeah. Where is Discord? Here we go. I'm going to go into the Discord because oh, I, I saw something earlier. What did you see? Tell me what you I saw. I see a lot of things. You see dead people? Mm -hmm. Right. <clears throat> you guys, I'm addicted to the Spindrift half tea, half lemon thing. Oh, did we tell them about Is our... the top half lemon and the bottom half is tea? It's all mixed together. So beautiful. That's pretty cool. Beautiful. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this lovely uh, community Ooh. on... Uh, Discord. Yeah. The link is on the screen. Yeah. Uh, it's our peeps. Yeah. There's there's some people who have taken ownership, which I think is really fun. I love this. Oh, the prime minister. Yes, David redacted. OTDM bingo drinking game. Oh my God, this is hilarious. <laughs> I don't encourage you doing this at home, but if you are interested in games mm. and you do listen to the podcast, this may be for you. Mm. What are you seeing, Katie? I think we've already done a couple of these. Today? It's the OTDM bingo drinking game. If we mention Russia, which you've already done. <sighs> Retraction, we haven't done that yet. Colt, we haven't done that one yet. Mm. Grinds my gears. We haven't gotten into that pit of despair. I just said that, so that's there's that. So we have two in a <laughs> row. We're already in a row. We're already three because you said Montreal Canadiens. See, 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 here you go. You, you can get the same thing <laughs> every week. politics. Already did that one. <laughs> Sean tries to speak French. What not did yet. You, oh, case pop. You already did. <laughs> I know. I went at home probably like, that's not how you say it. Whatever that sound is uh, made to change the subject. Oh, I th 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 <laughs> <laughs> wow. Emails with pictures. We talk about homeownership. <laughs> Katie tries to speak a language other than English. Podcast well, David, is apparently... sponsored or not sponsored by, in reference to any Canadian or British TV show. <laughs> in ref I think I might have already said reference the office. I got to turn the volume down there. It looked like we we're peaking a little. Oh, sorry. We peaked early peaked, and David caught I up on us. peaked already. <laughs> oh, David. Isn't this that funny? It's so good. He's keeping a really a fun list Goblin too. says, I'm so ready. Yeah. Well, there you have it. That's, I don't know if any of you have won yet, but um, yeah, we're not done with the episode. So that's awesome. We yeah. only, we're only getting started. Okay. Um, do you want to hop into emails? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. I'm ready. How do I do that here? You have way too many apps on your phone. I have just the right amount. He has so many apps, you guys. It's crazy. I have just the right amount that every time I open my phone looking for an app that I use on the regular, such as Instagram or Gmail, for it. I don't know where it is. I, I, I generally know where I've hidden the, uh, the, the app, you know, but. Yeah, it's funny. So. The, I'm just not it good It made me giggle the other day because. I went out to lunch with my friend Christina and she was digging through her wallet to show me something and her wallet was a mess, like a mess. Like nothing was in its slots. Things were falling out as she was trying to, I was like, that's a disaster. And she's like, oh yeah. And I was like, oh my God, you and Sean are like the same person because your wallet is a disaster and he can never find, and he has the smallest wallet known to mankind. I'm thinking about starting to wear a man purse. <laughs> Don't 
look at me that way. Hey, I see you, you looking. Could wear a man's satchel. I'm thinking I want one. I think you just need like a regular wallet. Like Larry got you that one that had all the slots, and you were like, mm. but meanwhile, because his has no slots, you guys. Well, that's a lie. It has two it's slots. Very simple way of organizing. He has to things. pull. It doesn't organize. He has to pull all of his cards out. I'm talking like license, green card, debit card, credit cards, all sorts of shit. Maybe a coupon. Don't maybe a tell Starbucks them what card. I have. Everybody has. Oh, what's the secret? I could say the same about mine. What's in my wallet? He has all what's this in your sh- wallet? What's this, in, this, this is, is not brought to you sponsored by. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, David. He knows us too well. So anyway, Sean has to pull everything out. Like just the other day, we were trying to purchase some art for our home. Mm. And Sean was like, so which card? Which card? And I was like, Jesus Christ. It's like, it's like shuffling. Like he has them all together in one. And I was like, look for the gold one. That's Do you know the why one. Instagram is so successful, Katie? Why? Because they've figured out how to make me buy why because you bought those pans those frown frown pans i i am using okay so instagram is so genius the way it's designed and i know that Mm -hmm. some people are like oh no it's over and it's not as fun as it used to be i don't know but i got off of it for four months felt free lighter in fact Mm. i just i didn't think about things Mm -hmm. i didn't think about taking pictures to share with my friends like look at this cool car i saw or Here's some pickles I've Even though pickled. you still take those pictures. I still take the pictures. Share them. They're for you. I want to know if I was taking the pictures for me versus feeling compelled to create content. The power of Instagram. Because I don't like social you. media. So I, yeah, he does. He hates it. But sometimes I like it. And so I went back into Instagram after taking a hiatus. Mm-hmm. I discovered that I do like it as a, as a place to look at photos. And there is some really interesting things. And people curate content mm-hmm. and I, I like that it feels good to look at you know if, if it's done well it doesn't well, have to be you're still learning so any of you who follow sean on instagram i'm here to tell you he's still learning so the other day he was posting some tiktoks onto his main feed and i was like honey well that, you have to admit they have a lot of tools in there that you don't like it's it's pretty simple okay because when you go from tiktok to share to stories is this a tech op- tip from you go ahead oh let's, i have a tech tip yeah yeah i used to love my friend mindy mcknight uh used to do tech tips tech talk tuesdays and i took so many i saved so many notes from that i know so, your knowledge really shot through the roof like past mine which is roughly someone in grade three i was gonna say mine's like what grade four i don't know but shot past is a strong a strong term i think i just use platforms more than you do so when it comes to TikTok Instagram integration, so when you're in TikTok and you want to share, you share to stories. There's a button in the bottom. When you hit share, it shows a little like that little maroony pink color that Instagram is known for yeah. with a little plus sign. And it says stories. And you say, yes, you hit it. And then automatically, hold on, automatically without you doing anything, your phone saves that TikTok and opens your Instagram stories. And all you legitimately have to do is say, send to my stories. Oh. Somehow Sean saved it, probably X'd out, probably forgot where the app was, opened back up his Instagram, hit plus and posted it to his main feed. And I was like, I don't think you mean to do that. And you're like, I did not mean to do that. Well, because I didn't know that it shared that way. I was sharing, what I was doing is I was, I'd press the download, save video to photo reel, and then I'd upload from Instagram. Why do you make it so hard for yourself? I didn't know that it had that feature. And truthfully- When you hit share in TikTok, the first option is stories. I guess because I stopped using, Instagram, like, and then they you can't blame our, it on Instagram. It is there's nothing you do in Instagram. TikTok does it all for you. <laughs> no, but what I meant is I don't know the difference between a story and a reel and a photo and a post and a and a live stream and a and a TikTok and a yin yang, uh, woo woo. I don't oh know God. all these terms in these apps. We were in the car the other day and how this was really clever. I forget what radio station we were listening to in Austin, like ninety eight point six or something like that. It's like a rock station, and the lady was like. It was like a little commercial. She was, you can follow us on, you know, Facebook. And she starts doing like the real ones, you know, Facebook and Wick Whack and Wham Bam and Thank You Ma'am. And, and she like, it's random words. And she's like, and the gram, like Instagram and Twitter. And she just, but all these random words. And it caught my attention because I wasn't even listening to her. But then I was like, wait, Wham Bam, thank you. What is this? I think I'm going to get and some. And the woo woos and the ha ha's. Like she had all these weird words. <laughs> You've inspired me. I, I think, appreciate it. I think we should get some business cards made up with fake names on them. Ooh. So if someone, you know, we're talking to somebody and you want to give them your card, you know, but you don't really want to give them your card. Mm. Girls play this game. I used to get fake phone numbers, you know. Oh, I'd always give, I always give my friend Jamie's number. I'm just kidding. I never got that. Uh, 
I used to give them out all the time. But what if we had fake business cards? Friend, Jamie. That, <laughs> and on the fake business card was like uh, Tammy Schmigamore and uh, mm. Sean Sten. You're you got, you're really sucking at this. At least <laughs> go with like something we already know. Like, what's the one in Seinfeld? Right, Penny Packer. Seinfeld. Yeah, George's Penny Packer. No, Vandaloo. Oh, Art Vandaloo or Art Vandalay. Yeah, but there's another guy who's Penny Packer. Oh. Is it Kramer? I don't know, but I just know Art Vandalay. Right. Is it yeah, import, so we need import export business or some shit. Perfect. <laughs> but, uh, my name is uh, Mykonos <laughs> from, I'm from the Greek. office. <laughs> you know. So, anyways, yes. we we make up these fake characters, and then we make business cards. We get uh, some made. And Why would we pay money? Because here's the here's the fun part. Oh, is on there. Here's the fun part. You put on the back. So your name on the front mm -hmm. with some little cheap logo like a really bad logo on a white card you uh -huh. flip it over and on the back it it has uh your connect with me mm. in in typewriter font and then underneath you put logos of social media platforms that are defunct like, uh, like MySpace, vine, MySpace vine your buzz oven your four square you know four square <laughs> buzz oven i don't even know what that is yeah yeah periscope but no periscope still there yeah but I was and then you put like Meerkat. sub counts underneath each of them like uh i have you know 40 friends <laughs> on buzz oven or um why is this fun well because it's a good little you know card i to, mean that's a good skit but i'm not buying some cards with some random shit on it to give to people that i don't want to talk to yeah i'd rather just say right. i don't have any cards it's been nice to meet you bye bye and walk away you're a lot more adult than i am i have a hard time escaping a conversation when we're at a party if someone's talking i'll just stand there until oh, they're you done know what talking a great escape is i have to use the restroom i'll see you later thanks walk away we used to go to that uh, walk away youtube event and there was um two people that would seek us out all the time oh it was that, that yes. weekly youtube event yes. they used to do a yes. i know those people yes and sean could never get out of those and i, I just, just, I just walk there. away <laughs> i'd be like i'm gonna go get another drink and then i just like leave the conversation yeah and i would just stand there and they would just talk you're primed for the south honey you're gonna in these conversations we're gonna so i was talking to i never wanted to you know, when someone's talking, I never wanted to tell them, uh, you know, like, stop. You don't have to tell them stop. If they're talking, you can just say, excuse me, which is not rude. Excuse me. Yes. I'm sorry. I really have to go to the restroom. It's been so nice talking to you. I'll see you around the party in a minute. Walk wow. away. I, Are you offended by that? No, but I, I would have a hard time saying that. Mm. I would probably just let them finish and then I would, <laughs> I would speed walk to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> this conversation went on for way longer than I intended. Did my mic just peek in your It did. Dang it. Has it been doing that the whole time? No. I think you just got excited. Sorry, guys. I got excited at the prospect of speed walking. Those shorts. <laughs> no, but I think something that I am going to do more of as I've as I try to take better care of myself is say no. Ah, the art and of saying no. I don't have to talk to someone. Like nobody says just because someone starts a conversation, you have to continue it. Like yeah. I was talking to a member of our community who is like born and raised in Texas. And she was saying, because she listened to our podcast, and she was like, you guys have got to get better at that. And you need to know that you can't even say like, I'm going to go meet friends because they might be like, I'll walk with you. You have to have a better out. And she's like, I always just say, I have to go to the bathroom. Okay. Because nobody's going to join you in there. Right, I'm gonna go with you then. Yeah, you're like, what? That's weird. You know, that's just a weird thing. No one would do that. Awesome. Should we invite some other people? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and if they do, then you just like pee as quick as possible or take your time. Yeah. Sitting there forever until they leave. I, I don't know. know, but we got to have a better out. Yeah. So you're gonna have to get better. But I think. Oh my god! I just got a call from the president in my secret spy <laughs> phone. I've got to get out of here. No. Sorry, it was a pleasure meeting I you. I ate some bad seafood earlier. Here's I have my to buzz go to the bathroom. Card. That's what you said. My buzz oven. Why are you handing out cards of <laughs> random things? Nobody has cards anymore, Sean. It's That's 2021. Funny, That's what I'm saying. It's funny. Like if you had a. We can pull our old cards up and offer those to people. Mm. <clears throat> I've had a few in my times. Me, yeah, you've had a lot of cards. Sean would love to make a business card. We went through like four iterations of business cards, and I was always like, I don't even know who I'm giving these to. I didn't give them to anybody. Nobody likes they business cards. They sat in cards. the glove box. They sat in the filing cabinet. Yeah. Oh my I God. think I gave out a grand total of one. Maybe like five. Oh, but really? But I never carried them with me because mm. I didn't want to connect. If I wanted to connect, I would have like done it on my own. No, but when we were first getting started, way back early in the early days where no one was really as connected as they are. True. And... 
we both were still in like traditional jobs to some extent where you did need to have a business card, but you kept wanting to make them. Like it wasn't just the first ones or the second ones or the third ones. I think we went through. I have a problem. I need to tell you. I love, I love business cards. (laughs) (laughs) Have you seen American Psycho? No. There is a scene in American Psycho. It's so well written. Brett Easton or Brett Ellis Easton or Ellison, whatever. And I may have seen this movie, but it's probably been forever. There's a scene where Patrick Bateman is so weirded out uh, because he's such a high strung. uh, Weirdo. Weirdo, complete Mm -hmm. weirdo. But, creep among creeps. Yeah, and they're uh, they're stockbrokers, I think. Mm-hmm. You know, high power traders in the New York scene in the eighties. You know, doing cocaine and whatever. And they're out to dinner, and they're wearing their you know beautifully um, uh, bespoke Tailored suits. suits. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, the one guy hands the other guy a business card, and, and he's he's describing the paper, the texture, the font. I think you told me about this. It's the creepiest scene because you realize what a nut job this guy is, or how and then you're like, tightly oh strung is. no. Yeah, you're like, if anyone ever has a conversation with you. Abort. That's it. Someone tells you details like that. Mm -hmm. You are legally obliged to tell the government that there's a whack job. You know, like tell a cop. I know somebody who's strange. (laughs) I mean, you really can't put them on a watch list, but you can let people know. But also, again, to my point, when you encounter someone that you just don't want to talk to anymore, or maybe you're just tired and you don't want to talk to someone anymore. You just say, I'm going to stop you right there. That's also an easy way to stop a conversation. It's been lovely to meet you, but I have to head home. So wonderful talking to you. I've just had a really long day. I hope to see you again soon. Another easy out. Yeah, that's probably better than turning them into the government. I don't know why I was going down that road. Because <laughs> you get nervous about yeah. any confrontation. Sean does not like confrontation. I'm actually okay with it when it comes to business or, well, no, or, I'm not really. You're really not comfortable at all. Even one time. I forget what we were doing, but there was someone we like either didn't want to work with. Oh no. It was like someone was telling us like firing and hiring people. Like oh, yeah. how, and you were like, you're going to have to do that. And I was like, I know. Yeah. If you're like, I don't know how I'd do that. And I was like, you tell them you fired. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's not it's me. Not, it's, it's you. No, it's just not working out. You know, we've right. tried to give you instruction. You just, you got to just be honest. Yeah. So I find that's my goal for myself is to like if we encounter <clears throat> our veteran friend who talked to us for an hour when we were really hungry yes i would say it's been so lovely meeting you i hate to cut you off but we were super hungry so we're gonna grab a bite right. hope you have a great day we'll see you around Bye. oh yeah being firm is is key here i'm not always you know but sometimes <laughs> no. i don't want to hurt people's feelings if i think they're very nice i don't want to i don't want them to think that i'm abandoning them in a middle of a conversation uh, you know? but that's like assuming way too much even as you said that you're like abandoning <laughs> them like what are you their mother well it's Holy. probably the best conversation they're going to have at the whole party or whatever so oh geez you're really thinking highly of yourself you know that's they're so... like here's my big shot i'm going to talk to him and, oh uh, my goodness and then then he said you know bye-bye you know, <laughs> can't do that I've never been offended with anyone like I'm cutting just the conversation short. I hope you know short. that that's this is all a joke. I know, but not. it's only partially a joke. <laughs> it's like I to, do amplify it for it, for 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 ratings. For ratings, clearly, I, I, I sex it up. <laughs> Gotta sex it up. Okay, can we move into our emails? Yeah, for sure. Are we done to. with that? I but, mean, but I'm gonna try to be more firm. <clears throat> no, let's get into it. We're I gotta go. Bye. In some form. Right now. No. Oh. Yeah, I got. I got Excuse me. <laughs> I'm out. I'm done with this. Okay. <clears throat> it's been a long day. That's how uh, podcasts are made, folks. Uh, one person gets really mad and storms off, and then your numbers go through the roof, and that person comes back the week <laughs> after, and they're friends again, and then the <laughs> other person goes away again. Ah, we should have fought. Damn. Drama should, sells it. I should have pretended to be super offended by everything. When we were making that TV show, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, Drumheads, mm-hmm. the number one thing that was asked of Demetrius, which is Lamar's mm-hmm. cousin, who is shopping the show around, the number one thing was, yeah, it's really cool that these guys are building drum kits for famous people. I remember this. Wouldn't it be cooler if like Jersey Shore was really hot on MTV? Mm-hmm. Like, so, you know, they, they have their regular lives, they're building drums, but then they fight a lot. Like maybe some of the cast can fight with each other. Yeah, they don't get along. That was notes that we got on the show. But that's that just ridiculous because like the brothers actually got along. So they'd like create these like fake beefs with them. And, yeah, to a certain extent. And then they didn't get along. You well, know, they have disagreements, for, for of real. course. Yeah. You know, and you have, yeah, you have disagreements in a family, but the what's show. The, what's the camera crew supposed to do? I always wonder about that. Like, 
Isn't it super uncomfortable for any camera crew to watch people fight in front of them? It was really uncomfortable because I like was a cameraman. Following them around, and you're like, give me more of that. That's good. Do you? I mean, it's, it's just super uncomfortable. It's not healthy. Uh, no. Reality television, no. uh, and specifically scripted reality television. Mm -hmm. That you know, the OC was really good at it. Or no, Laguna Beach. I'm sorry. Yeah, they, they. I watched some of that. The only reality show that I actually loved and watched a lot was The Newlyweds with uh, Nick Lachey and Jessica Simpson. They seemed lovely. I don't. It was just funny. She, How are they doing? They're divorced and remarried <laughs> to different people. He's got like kids with some other lady, and I don't know what her I, name we is. We may have made that joke uh, in episode two of this podcast. Really? Yeah. For some reason, that was a deja vu for me. Oh, funny. Yeah. I just, I just thought it was really funny that like she. I remember two instances on that show that I thought were really funny. Number one, Jessica Simpson's a filthy person and doesn't clean up after herself, or at least she was at that time. And Just kids with a bunch of money at that point, totally. really. But you know, they so. probably had cleaning people in every day or whatever. But right. she had gotten flowers for like an event or a birthday or something. And Nick was like, you have to throw those out. They smell horrible and they're dying. And they were seriously dead. And I would assume they left them there on purpose so we could have this moment now that I know what I know. But anyway, she was like, she like fought it and whined about it and then went to throw them away. But if anybody who knows, cause he was like, you can't just put that in the garbage. It's got all the water in it and everything. You have to like pour it out and throw the flowers away and then wash the vase. You know, anybody who's ever had dead flowers in water knows how fucking smelly that water is. It's really bad. It's the worst. It's like dead. It's dead like plant matter. So it fucking stinks like death. And she doesn't know this cause she doesn't clean very often. And so she pulls the flowers out and throws them and then starts gagging. And then she's trying to pour it's it down the sink smell. and he's like, stop being dramatic. Just start rinsing, turn the water. And like, he's trying to help her, like get rid of it. And she's like, Bleh. it's like <laughs> swamp gas you've created in your house. <laughs> it's so weird. You, 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 but she grow was totally beautiful things outside. We chop them down. We bring them inside to die. And we just, the, we just gets them. more and more pungent until you make swamp gas. But what I do and what I encourage other people to do is just to change the water out every couple days. I do all days. the time. Yeah. They, they and love it. It doesn't stink. Also, here's a hot tip. Hot tip. A lot of people bring plants from outside inside when, you know, like you cut some flowers, but what you're doing is you're putting it in a completely different environment. You're probably treating your house with heat or with or cooling HVAC. Or whatever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and if you take a mister and you spray your plants, they, they some are Some of them to, like it. Some of them do not. Well, flowers love it. That's why when they're in a flower shop, mm -hmm. they, they're always misting them. They're in those encased rooms at a certain temperature. Well, they're and, cooled to the temperature. Yeah. yeah and it's humid. I mean, not super humid, but humid nonetheless. Flowers love it. Keeps I was trying to talk to our cleaning lady about what humid is in Spanish. And I think it's just humid, but I could be wrong. That's what she said. And I was like, there's some words. My Spanish is not its best. Mm. Um, but anyway, that cracked me up about Jessica. And then the second was, and obviously everybody knows this one. If you are my age and you watched it too, is that she thought chicken of the sea was actually chicken and not tuna. I mean, and it says he, chicken on the can. I mean, but it smells like fish, like so strong. Like, why would you think that that's chicken? I don't know. Has she ever had it? Maybe she just knew the market. No, she was eating it. She liked it. She was eating it when he, when he said, oh, I didn't stupid. know you. I thought you didn't like seafood or something. I don't know the full story. And I forget. But it's something to that effect. Like, I didn't think you liked blah, blah, blah. And she's like, I'm eating chicken. And he's like, chicken of the sea, which is tuna. And she was like, no. I mean, it was a funny conversation. And she got teased relentlessly. In her defense. Though. And I think she got a brand deal with chicken of the sea. So jokes on everybody. Yeah. It, when you eat meat that's in a tin, it doesn't always taste like meat. It's true. You know, it's like uh, it's got little, tin little flavor. Tinny. Oh. <laughs> and tuna little, gets little that. metal. It gets a little, a little bit of metal. I think the cans have gotten better. You look mm -hmm. at cans nowadays; they're pretty advanced. Not like the nineteen eighties cans that you yeah. know. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah. So she was definitely eating out of a tin. Yeah. Um, but she did a get a brand snack. deal recently about that. There was something oh. that happened. Chicken of the sea. It's possible. Yeah. Good for her. Back. Yeah. Hey, you know. Well, Katie. Okay. You ready to get I'm into ready the... for letters. Okay, let's do this. Now, we have one from Morena. Morena? Yeah. From Italy? Mm hmm Correct. <laughs> and this one is entitled, House Decorating. Oh. I'm excited. Hello, Sean and Katie and all the OTDM family. Hello and how to do. I recently started to listen to this podcast and it's keeping me great company while I walk. I picture her fast speed walking speed right now. Speedwalkers. OTDM speedwalkers. I love it. <laughs> I got drawn in by the story of you moving in the new house as I purchased my first home mid last year and moved as well at the end of 2020. It's a Congratulations. lot. Congratulations. Right? 
I live by myself and with all the COVID restrictions, I had to do everything on my own. And it was so hard that after I'd moved in, I did absolutely nothing for months and I still have many things to take care of, right? As if the moving isn't stressful enough, then you have to like set up house somewhere else. It's all good though. You're 90% of the way there. So at your leisure, at you your dress leisure. the walls at yeah. your leisure. <laughs> Going correct. I just like to say it that way. Yeah. Um, but there were certain things that like, and this sounds silly to other people, but I like to like organize things. But like the laundry room was like a total, I just threw shit in there and never dealt with it until recently. And that, it's been like three months. And then the closet in one of the spare bedrooms that has all like our sports equipment was just a disaster. And I was like, I'll deal with it when that organizational tool that I ordered shows up, which will be in like a month. You know what, um, Katie, you did such a beautiful thing for us. what I do? You know how I have a smell aversion? I don't like stink. Yes, he doesn't like stink at all. I don't like it when a cloth goes sour in the kitchen or whatever, mm -hmm. or towels that get a little musty or mm -hmm. dusty smelling. I don't like the dusty smell. No musty dusty here. Yeah, and I don't like the way uh, pillows smell that are natural, like chicken feathers, you know? Sean says they smell like chickens. <laughs> I hate that kind of pillow. Mm -hmm. So anyways, you did a beautiful thing. Um, a smell that I'm sure everyone who's been around a lake, not so much the ocean, but it happens in the ocean as well but a lake specifically, your gear stinks. Like a life jacket. And when you go to rent a paddleboard or a canoe somewhere, and the life jacket's been worn all summer, sweaty, hot, sweaty, wet, hot, dry, wet. wet, dry, wet, wet, sweat. Man, that wet. thing is just a soggy diaper of Bacteria. human it's gross. It's biomes, gross. you know? It's gross. And anyways, so they stink. And we went <laughs> kayaking that one time and I was like, Oh God, it's so beautiful outside. It's, it's, you know, I can smell the grass and I can see these, you know, the waves and it's beautiful. Sun sparkling on the water. And I'm like, what is that fucking smell? It's your life jacket. <laughs> Remember how many we tried on oh, to try to get one that didn't stink? Yeah. Blah. But it's, it, it is what it is. Same thing with yeah. hockey gear. Your gear stinks. You know, it just is what it is. Now there's ways to avoid it. But of course. ultimately you might want to trade that stuff out after a season, you know? Yeah. So the beautiful thing you did was you bought two life vests and I I've did. never owned my own life vest. So I feel really? very adult. Not even as a kid. I had no. this. I didn't live on water. Yeah, you did. No, well on an island. But... <laughs> Montreal's filled with water. <laughs> <laughs> but I, was, I wasn't growing up on like the, the shores of the, the river, you know? Well, yeah, I didn't either, but I always I'm had. a suburb kid, all we saw was sprinklers. That's so sad. I had like a Snoopy <laughs> zip up one as a kid. I'm just kidding. We went to the lakes and stuff too. Yeah, you just never had your own life jacket. Well, we didn't need them. Like I learned how to you, swim oh, when I was a kid. Well, otherwise you drown. Jesus Christ. Exactly. I so. had water water wings. I remember those yeah. as a kid. They float. Then I had Snoopy zip up. Then I had like a purple, bright purple one. And then the last one I had was like hot pink and purple. And it was like until I was in high school essentially. Sweet. Well, hey, do you want to know the difference between California and Texas? What? One of the differences. There's is so many differences. We were out on the water, your aunt, your mom, you and I, and we all had our mm -hmm. little vehicles paddling around. And um, when you rent uh, a kayak or whatever, you have to have a life jacket. Yeah, well, it's just for probably for their insurance. Yep, but we got it on the water and everyone still had their life jackets on. And as we were paddling across the lake area, the sheriff on his cool boat comes up and he says hey ladies to your mom mm -hmm. you it was kind of funny i was like well, and hello. i watched because i was a little bit further away mm -hmm. and uh you're, he says to your mom uh hey just so you know that life vest is just a suggestion you can put it in the netting right at the front of your boat and it's just there in case you know but you don't have to wear it mm -hmm. and she was like oh okay he's like Y'all have a good day now. Then, blah, 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 well, blah, blah, then he blah, stops blah, blah, a second and he goes, it is safer if you wear the jacket, but I just want you to know you don't have to. And then he put it in gear blah, 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 yep, and he, he float did, away he this float big, away. beautiful boat. I kept my life jacket on because I wanted to jump in and float. Yeah, but it was so cool. And I was like, in California, they'd be like, you must. They'd blow their whistle. Boop, boop, boop. Excuse me, this is going to be a ticket. It's going to cost you 100. Freeze, citizen's arrest. Citizen's <laughs> arrest. <laughs> Gavin Newsom sends his regards. Here's a ticket for $65, bro. And he'd be like, <laughs> Gotta catch me first, bitch. Just kidding. They want to ticket you for everything. Oh my oh, God. God, do they ever. Everything's a ticket in California. Remember the other day I woke up, so it was Monday morning, and I I told Sean, I was like, oh my God, I just had this flash that like we need to move the car because we had street cleaning on Mondays. And I was like, 
Isn't it so nice that our car is in a garage and we don't have to move it? <laughs> when we first started dating and living together in Santa Monica, mm -hmm. I accumulated a lot of tickets. Sean is not good at things like that. And I would even tell you when I got up for work, I'd be like, because I was still working out of the house at this time. And I was, I think it was when I was a sales rep. And I'd yeah. be like, you got to move your car, honey. It's at nine o'clock. They're going to come by for sweet. And you'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you'd get a ticket. And they're $65 each time. Yeah, that, those were uh, expensive years. Yeah, I don't know what. And you were at home, like I know. ADHD, there. I know you're like <laughs> squirrel. Something else pulled your attention away, and you're like just gotta, completely. Gotta wait till the rate right, until you can't go over the finish line, and you sprint. That's, then he'd that's like the feeling. Well, then oh, I got time. I got time. Yeah. Oh no. Never just take had another time. phone call. Oh shit! <laughs> and then it was too late. And then he'd be so pissed, and I was like, I don't even feel bad for you because I told you. It didn't happen every day. It was like once every second month. But that adds up after that's quite 10 a bit. years, you know. That's quite a bit. Well, when I got rid of my car and we just had the one, then we didn't forget because I was in charge with you. Marina, I'm sorry. I hijacked your story. Okay, we're back I, to it. I, I feel bad about this. So she purchased her first home. Congratulations. Oh, congratulations. And she moved in. And so it was like she still has many things to take care of. Remember? Anyway, it's a perfect segue, Marina. It's like you knew we'd get off topic there and you brought us back. Thank you. This month, I finally got enough cash to buy my night tables. Isn't that awesome when you feel like right now, I just finally got to schedule our bed delivery. You guys have been sleeping on a mattress on the floor like hobos for a while. Not that I haven't done that before. I've slept I've, on a mattress on the floor before many times. It but, seemed natural to me. That's <laughs> but we, like, what do, I, what do you need the rest? You just need the mattress. And the box spring. Mattress and floor. This is all you have. That's all you'll need. But I ordered the bed that we wanted like two months ago. Yeah. So we put the other bed in the spare room because when the movers were putting stuff away, I was like, I don't want to put that bed in there only to have to take it apart in like a couple weeks and move it back. Well, right. it's been months. So we slept in the spare bedroom for a while till the mattress showed up. Then when the mattress showed up, we slept on the mattress on the floor. Not really. But eventually we were uh, we, forced we, out because the, it was so bright. The sun started. It was. Now element. I got curtains for that room. Everything is slowly coming together. You, you guys. You were so good at nesting. Coming together. Thanks, Annie. I just sit and I watched a video on YouTube yesterday of mm -hmm. a bird uh, building a nest. It goes from three minutes to egg, or no, from uh, nothing to egg. Oh, in, in three, three minutes. minutes. Sorry. Gotcha. I knew what you meant. Three yeah. minutes to egg. And the <laughs> the camera is looking from inside of a bird box. It mm -hmm. gets put up. That's cool. And the camera turns on and then it's in fast forward. Yeah, but, but you see him dropping all the things. The bird keeps coming in through the, the window, like the porthole, because we're looking inside of the thing. Mm -hmm. And he's putting material in. But at first he investigates and he taps all around the wood. Then he starts coming back with like, or I guess it's a she because she laid an egg. Would have been weird <laughs> if he uh, went in and laid the egg. You know, I, would, I wouldn't have known. <laughs> uh, anyway, hey. so uh, the bird is, he sets up, or she sets up shop and then deposits an egg within three minutes. It's amazing. The, the sped up. Well, it's interesting because we had those birds, remember, that laid the eggs in our little Eve on our back door. I felt connected to them. I know. And it was a guy and a girl. They would like trade off who took care of it and who sat on them and who fed them. And they blah, had blah. three or four little chicks in there. Yeah. I don't remember how many. They didn't say tweedledee, though. They were like mm. real squawkers. They were real squawkers. But it was kind of cool to see. And... It is interesting to watch because they like they want to make sure it's safe, so they test everything out and, yeah. da, 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 and then start building. It was amazing. I'd, I'd never seen anything like that sped up. And those are the gems of the internet. Yeah, you know? it's true. Plus, I didn't have more than three minutes. So that made you think of nesting, me nesting. Yeah, that's basically that's what, what you're doing. Oh, oh yeah. I'm building. I tapped around, and now I'm bringing things in. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, we're getting there. We're getting there. Okay. So, sorry. Back to the story. So, okay, so the last piece of furniture missing is those night tables. Oh, uh, okay. So I can finally stop using chairs, right? Not having something sit next to you at your bed so you can put like your glass of water, or your phone or whatever you want. It, yeah. It's like, because mine right now, because of where the bed is, it's like not even next to our nightstands. So it's like on the floor. I'm putting stuff on the floor. Okay, anyway, um, back to this. The problem is they are suspended and I have to fix them to the wall. I've seen those online and I was like, I don't know if I can handle that, like to have to fix. So they're on my legs. I just yeah. you fix them right there. I have nobody helping me, but I am a bit of a handy woman and I've always had lots. Oh, but I've always had lots of trouble with holes in the wall, mm. but I'm going to try nonetheless. And I'll let you know the outcome. It can't be the end of the world. I hope. Cheers from Italy, Morena. Yeah, and I have trouble with that stuff too. We, um, 
Sean and I have do not have a good track record of putting holes in the wall. We've made some big holes in the wall. I mean, <laughs> the first couple of times we tried to mount the TV, it was crooked. Yeah. And that wasn't good. So we <laughs> bolted those those big lag bolts into the, another part of the wall and we missed the stud because they weren't 16 on center. No. So, and ours here wasn't either. Right. But luckily this time around, we've learned our lesson and we had our handyman who like fixed our roof and patched all that stuff, helped Sean put the TV up. And he was like, had his little stud finder. And he was like, oh, the studs are not the 16 inches like they should. So your bracket's not going to fit. We're going to have to get a piece of wood yeah. to put them together. And he fit, did that. So it was all proper. You know, uh, Marina, if you're ever looking for another YouTube channel that has some interesting content, I might recommend Laura Kampf. Oh, yeah, Kampf. She is very she interesting. She builds things and makes things. It's very cool. And if you want to I feel like inspired where you you know, you know just said what, that you're, you pride yourself in being a bit of a handy woman. Mm-hmm. If you watch Laura's channel, you may be inspired. I mean, she she goes after everything and she she gets excited about her projects. She puts them through the paces and yeah. then the completion is so cool. And just the way she looks at the world, she found a bench recently. So I follow on Instagram. Oh, uh-huh. She found a bench maybe last year and mm-hmm. it, it was by the water, but it was broken. And she took a photo probably and said, oh, it's sad that this bench is broken, but I'm since I like to fix things, I'm going to adopt this bench. I'm going to fix it and I'm going to make it really cool. And she did that. And I think uh, the one year anniversary of that uh, just came up and it was broken again. Some, oh, no. Someone had broken it or, you know, ah. whatever. So she she fixed it again, I believe. But it's just kind of cool like to look at the world that way. You yeah. Know? Um, Anyways, it's a great channel if you enjoy fixing things. Yeah, which and we I like do. her. We, we've gotten to know her a little bit over the years. And God, she's, she's really so nice. good at drawing and articulating so her thoughts so many in things. English. Yeah. Because um, she's German. Yeah. Yeah. So she speaks Polish. Um, but anyway, no, just she speaks German. <laughs> but like, her channel is uh, no. in English. Yeah. Oh, oh, I didn't even realize. Yeah. I probably knew that back when I met her and looked at her channel, but I don't even remember. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it is interesting. I am more open to recognizing and identifying the things I'm not good at and just if I if we can afford to hiring someone to help because you and I not only do we argue about that kind of stuff like ways that we should ways that you were taught versus the way I was taught yeah. to do said thing around the house um but also it's just like we aren't neither of us it's like not what we do <laughs> we're no Laura no so and you know what is really interesting hmm. Something I didn't realize when I was younger, because if you're vulnerable, you know, you, you're going to look weak, you know, so you mm. pretend you know everything so you don't look weak. The truth is. I said, that's not true. But no, okay. I know. But so what is the truth? What I've, what I've come to learn is it when you let your guard down and you're not a know-it-all mm-hmm. the, and you make mistakes openly, like in front of other people, don't be afraid to fuck up mm-hmm. because this allows you to look vulnerable. And if you... If you say, hey, I don't know everything, you're going to meet people who know those things because it'll naturally. Or maybe another know it all. No, are you? <laughs> <laughs> all you got to do, Sean. No. Let me tell you. No, but you know what I'm saying. Like, if, if, you, if you're vulnerable about what your weaknesses are, other people can help you. And They're then like, you can get help and also you can learn. Yeah. You know, you know if you, you want you to. You seek out someone who can teach guitar because you can't play guitar. Yeah. You know, um, you want to know about gardening, you take gardening classes. Mm-hmm. You don't say, no, no, I know what's going on. I know what's best here. Yeah. Like me, I've, I've killed a lot of plants. Sean, the other day with our money plant told me, what are you doing? Because I just snapped one of the dead bits off. And he's like, you don't snap it, you cut it, and then you wait for the stick to fall. See all the little sticks down here? I was like, that's what that is? And I was like, have you looked us up? No, no, no. That's just what you do. And I was like, no, that's not what you do. Leon and George that we bought that one plant from sends me things all the time telling me and the more of the dead bit that you can get off of the plant the better because otherwise it sends energy to that area and it's not necessary okay <laughs> I don't know that's what I'm saying I'm, I'm gonna be but you vulnerable didn't say, I don't know you were like what are you doing as if I was doing something wrong Katie I'm holding myself to a higher standard mm, going this, forward this is a new page we're turning I, a page I turned over a new leaf <laughs> and then Katie snipped it and threw it in the yeah. trash Pulled the whole thing off and threw it in the garbage. All right, let's get another letter going. Okay. <laughs> we have a speak pipe. Oh. I have to let it load. It's loading. Loading, loading. 
Salut tout le monde, this is Father Dubuc from La Turque. It's our favorite father. Full disclosure, or as we call it, mea culpa. Mea culpa. We must talk of some of the bad boys of the church. Mm. And let me tell you, we had some really hardcore soldier dressed like monk. <laughs> Moses mm. was honor graduate of our TTI, the Torquemada Training Institute, which we named after our Grand Inquisitor, Thomas de Torquemada. Oh, Thomas Tatar. Of course, here of the Dominicans, the <laughs> Dominicanes, the Ounds of God. They are like our own SEAL Team Six. We also have Jesuits who, like the CIA or NSA, they report directly to the Pope and are involved in many, many black rope operations. Black rope operations. Also, like the government, we do not have very good finance checking. Some of our subcontractors, like the Mafia and the Canadian Residential School, have dragged us through the mud and made a real mess of things. We like to say we are art rich and cash poor. <laughs> Even with this heavy baggage, I still think we offer the best bangs for your bucks for those looking for spiritual guidance with a good benefit package. For example, we have Not already so. negotiated several paid holidays for you throughout the year, which I don't think any Johnny-come-running religion can do that. <laughs> Okay, my sheeps. Till next time, remember to be kind and take good care of each other. <laughs> my sheeps. Oh, your dad kills me. Oh. Father de Buck. Wow. I think it speaks for itself. It's uh, so good. It's really good. We he, have one more from writes, him. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, he, he had sent him in. and uh, This is, we're almost, I mean, we're July 11th. We're, we're getting there. We're getting caught up. So I, I think, think we keep saying that. And I think we're always a month behind, but uh, tisk tisk. Salut tout le monde, this is Father <laughs> Tubic from Hesuk. Ah, uh, music. Who don't love a classic Gregorian chant like Requiem Eternam or Te Deum, huh? <laughs> Classics we can all sing along with for sure. But maybe we could speed up the beat a bit. The young people need a faster beat to match their we iPhone do. and Nike shoe. We do. So last week I write a few fast Eddie Van Halen style lick for the store part of the service. Oh Next my. week I promise to share my Spotify playlist a Gregorian chant. For sure they don't call me the radical priest for nothing. <laughs> but serious man, we must also talk a bit about Spotify the elephants chant. in the bedroom. Mm. Yes, God's mental health mm. has also suffered a bit during this pandemic. A lot of people are blaming him for this mess and we all know it is because of the Moodsy communist Chinese food. We can still get a number two for one, but now it is a vaccine instead of one done. Honestly, <laughs> I think God uh, was always a bit fragile, mentally speaking, you know. He go around saying he is three and one, which is a bit schizophrenic, no? Maybe Katie three can one. explain to us yeah, and tell us how we best can support him these days. It is not easy teaching all this three and one to my sheeps, but one of the three say he is human, so we must be kind and do our best to take care of him. Okay, my sheeps. Till next time, remember to be kind and take good care of each other. Wow. He writes dense words and structure there. And Your dad is a, a great writer. I want to copy that. I wonder if he'll send me a text or maybe I'll transcribe it. I think you'd have to transcribe it because I don't know if he's actually... Do you think he's written it before he said it or do you think he's just rolling oh, man. with it? Because he's, he's probably just rolling with it. It's pretty fun. Don't That's, you think? It's pretty advanced to roll with it and build a story that, <laughs> that thick. I wonder if he draws notes like uh, Eminem, you know? <laughs> And then he goes and spits his bars, the yeah. father du Dubuc character. Dubuc. I envision that my dad is probably getting dressed up for the part before he does his role. He gets in he front of the, combs his hair. Yeah, yeah. Gets in front of the mirror and talks himself. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna do that character today, buddy, and it's gonna be good. It's you gonna know? be great. Yeah. You've got this. Yeah. And he riffs a little bit, runs outside into the cold weather. Or no, it's summertime now. It's so. hot and yeah. he probably gets bit with a couple of mosquitoes. Fireflies then... in the sky and he just does his thing, you know. Mm -hmm. records it on his a phone. black fly bites him he runs back inside yeah <laughs> this is the way of the north montreal summers yeah nobody wrote a song called montreal summers did they no we should no. okay there's a uh, patio lanterns by uh kim mitchell that one's pretty good is that pretty close okay that's what i envision he, hmm. that's probably what my father's listening to right before he goes outside and records these he probably listens to patio lantern by uh kim mitchell Impossible. good 80s tune yeah yeah okay okay thank you father de book Okay, we're moving on. We have Ben, our, what is he? He's our, our tech liaison. He is our space liaison. He, he is, does a uh, lot of things. He knows a lot about Tesla, mm -hmm. uh, electricity. He's our, yeah, he's our liaison to all things technical. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Ben wrote us a letter. And the subject line says, my modular home of choice. Ah. 
Dear Sean and Katie, in episode number 72, Sean mentioned wanting to get a modular home someday. I have often thought about a particular type, namely those from Green Magic Homes. I like the name. Bum, bum, bum. They basically look like a hobbit home. What? Hey. I'm sold. Do they have rounded doors? I'm going to have to click through. We're going to have to find out. When I was younger, I remember looking at Architectural Digest, like a young age, you uh-huh. know, seeing ones in the uh, early 80s, let's say. And I remember some of the styles of homes that came out of the 70s. Mm-hmm. And people were just dreaming like crazy dreams at one point in uh, isn't North that America what it, and Europe. Isn't that what it's all about? I think they're still doing it, but these were crazy dreams of the 70s, you know, okay. like a home that's on a cliff and stilts, you know, these famous California properties oh, or okay. like <clears throat> carved into a mountainside in Maine, you know, like you're like that thing's overlooking the ocean and it's like a Are ship. You just- like talking about one in particular no, architect? Just, it sounds like you are. No, there's just that like style. Like the cantilever that era. house. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, not not just um, Frank Lloyd Wright, but that's uh, what that sounded like to me. But okay. But yeah, when when they were making mighty structures, you know, mm-hmm. and I don't see like the mighty structures now. I see a lot of stucco and like McMansions. But we're not like working with architects and going into places where people do work with architects. Do yeah. you think? I mean, do we go into the Hollywood Hills? No, that'd be where you'd have them on like big pillars. For sure, for sure. I just think that there was an era of building that must have been so grandiose to see. Or maybe I'm just looking through nostalgia. I think you're looking through nostalgia. Yeah, it's probably nostalgia. (laughs) Okay, back to these though. They basically look like hobbit homes, including having grass above your home, allowing them to stay cool during the day. So people are dreaming big Mm -hmm. again is what Ben is saying. We're not just stucco homes. You can have these cool... Remember they had one like this in um, Grand Designs where they built on the outskirts of like that, I don't know. I don't know what kind of property. Remember, it was a super, super bougie house where everything was built in, like all the furniture was built in, remember? Yeah. And it was next to some kind of like fancy pants area or like a government property or something. And so they made it so it looked like it wasn't there, like the grass on the roof and stuff. It was amazing. It was very cool. Okay, and they have a very unique shape might not ever do this, but I think of it from time to time. And you can see some pictures at greenmagichomes.com. Pop them up on the screen So right I am here. pulling them up so we can see them. Ooh, look at the rounded, the rounded windows. <gasps> Ooh, this is beautiful. <gasps> yeah, I dig this. This is cool, Ben. This is amazing. Those rounded windows are something else. I really think. Look, oh my goodness. Yeah. Wait, I want to flip that back. Oh. No. There. There it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, That is yeah. beautiful. I love this. Hmm. Modular construction. Our water and corrosion resistant structures are shielded with Wait two a minute. layers of waterproofing. Uh, did you read the fine print? It says you he's, have to dig your own hole. He's making it up. <sighs> ben, yeah, th- this looked so good, but then when we did dig a hole to put the house That's in it. That's not true. Don't believe him at all. <laughs> Lies. Fine print. You got to read the fine print. Always. Are we ready? Yeah. Next yeah. letter. All right. Good talking to you, Ben. <laughs> we miss you already. <laughs> miss you. We'll see you next time, champ. <laughs> you know when people use words like that? Champ or oh, buddy boss or pal. Or buddy, yeah. or, oh, man. That rubbed me the wrong way. I mean, buddy doesn't bother me so much. Chief. Oh, yeah. Champ. Pal. Like talking down to you. Yeah. It feels a little condescending. I used to I know say, not everyone means it that way, too. I so. used to say honey a lot. That was just kind of how I talked. But I don't do it as much anymore because I feel like it sometimes can be condescending when I don't mean it that way. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't it know how It seems like a lot of talk. that flavor has been taken out of the language, you know? Yeah. That's what Mario Cuomo said, by the way, um, this week when he resigned. He was like, I, I didn't know the rules. The line had changed at some point. Is that point. what he said? Yeah, that was part of his defense. Not very, uh, he, he's not repentant about being found guilty with, through that investigation. Wow. Yeah. I didn't I mean, even know he was found. Gu- I mean, I already thought he was guilty, which I know is not a court of law and not really fair, but I didn't know he was found guilty. Yeah. Uh, there was like, uh, they, they walked it through and not guilty as in, I don't think there was a court case. I think yeah. it was a, a, not an examination, but a, a special investigation. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the, I think he'd hoped it would just go away. Yeah. And then more and more people came forward and, yeah. and listen, maybe the line has changed from when the guys got started. In the politics, line should never have been where it was. But everyone knows it was there. Yeah. Right. We it used to be a little creepy. Um, and, you know, hopefully we, but now, things have changed. Yeah. But this guy was still doing it. And so, <sighs> buddy, when you, you know, when the first, disc- anyways, doesn't matter. Yeah. It's interesting that he stepped down and uh, hopefully 
you know, during a pandemic um, that we that that state moves forward and the nation moves forward. And How did we even get into this? Was, what are we talking? Why? Doom and gloom, baby. Uh, why? I don't okay, know. Moving on. Next letter by Lynn says, entitled, just a really dumb idea. Smiley face. I'm excited already. Hello. I'm glad you like Texas in your new house. Thank you. Thank you. I was surprised to hear that you're not used to rain. But when I think about it, I guess it does make sense considering where you lived. But it's just not something I've really thought about before, despite visiting California once and seeing the desert-like landscape. Yeah, mm. I don't know if people, I don't think people realize when they say California's in a drought, they fucking mean it. That place is on fire and there's no water. So parched. And not to be like pit it's, of despair, but like Arizona, I don't fucking laugh, California, like, Nevada, get your shit together because the Columbia River is not lasting. We need to have other ways. Like I can not be thankful enough to Linnea, my manager who lives in LA and was on the some kind of committee to stop them from turning one of our reservoirs into fucking condos. Not the Columbia, the Colorado. Or Colorado, sorry. Right, right. Yeah, I, I, think, didn't, I meant that, sorry. But maybe the Columbia comes through tributaries down here but i, think I mean it it's up in them. washington that's why i thought of the columbia yeah though. but the colorado you are correct make a retraction anyway the um the mismanagement Katie, because Katie, the doom and gloom because babe. even when it rains in california they don't capture it yeah so yes you are correct lynn that we don't get any rain ever can't really remember if it did rain when we were there, when they were in California. But either way, I hope that you'll be happy where you are. And I'm excited that you have yourselves a house. Once I was in Florida, and when I was there, I experienced rain and thunderclouds in a way that I have never done before. That's like Texas. Yeah. Because I've been in Florida for that too. I agree, Lynn. And I grew up in Washington State where there's plenty of rain, but it's a different kind of rain. Like my mom and aunt were like so stoked about the thunderstorm. It was hilarious. Okay. That's one of the cool things about traveling and living in different areas is experiencing just the weather as a human mm -hmm. being because we live inside, you know, these houses um, that are. We do. The, it's it coddles us in a lot of ways, you know, <laughs> uh, until you just don't do any more physical activity and just sit in your lazy boy. <laughs> that reminds me. They even me, call the chair a lazy boy. That reminds right? me of Dwight in the office when he said the coddle don't get me started on how coddled the human anus is remember he's talking about toilet paper because he yeah. has like a quarter ply or some shit oh my god oh by the way katie mm -hmm. i must thank you mm -hmm. um you purchased uh some new toilet paper i did and hey guys if you haven't tried this new charmin stuff it's charmin ultra strong it's not new but sean just hasn't had it in a while well no but there's something really cool that i just discovered and i think this is a heck of an upgrade but i thought at first hey is that toilet paper torn Oh, because it's like rippled? Yeah, it's it's <laughs> rippled like ruffles. Oh, then know, that's ruffles ultra chips. soft. Yeah. Yeah, but I was like, I've never seen that before. It's they, new. That's new. They've upgraded toilet paper, guys. So <laughs> just so you know, in my lifetime, I've seen many iterations of toilet paper because I'm older, you know. Because I'm older. One time my parents came back from Russia and they had a bunch of trinkets with them. Mm. They had uh, fur hats and they had uh, uh, a Pepsi bottle, you know things that from Russia, so it had Cyrillic letters on it. Yeah. One of the things that they also brought back were those little dolls, you know, the nesting oh, uh -huh, dolls. Uh -huh. Very cool, and I'd love to look at those because the painting was all hand-painted. Mm -hmm. A lot of handmade goods Yeah. from Russians as opposed to it coming from a factory was like yeah, hand-painted. Cool. Um, they also brought back samples of toilet paper, and I thought that was odd, but it was very Is interesting. Is this a lie? No, this is Why true. Why would they bring back toilet paper? Just to show you how bad it was? Exactly. Oh. So, in this toilet paper, it was like stiff as a as a piece of paper, like a doctor's note or something. Piece of paper. How are you supposed to wipe anything with it? And it was like kind of translucent, like it was like not really. It wasn't very a lot of fiber, but it was like stiff as a board. So maybe, you know, however they made this pulp. On top of that, in the paper there was a couple of splinters. So if you bent the board, that's little, not true. Yeah, it was splintery toilet paper. So. I've seen that type of toilet paper, and then I've seen the evolution all the way to what capitalism gets you. Mm -hmm. And baby, we got a new invention, the toilet paper game. I'm so happy that you have bought this. Mm -hmm. Game changer. Char I, Charmin, I don't know when they started doing this. It was the last delivery we got of it, but when you rip it off instead of it being straight across, it's like wavy. And Super it's just, cool. It's fun. <laughs> it's the little pleasures in life. Okay, back to Lynn's letter. <laughs> But she didn't see that one coming. Okay. So when she was in Florida, she experienced rain and thunder in a way she never has before. The lightning shot out of the clouds, both upwards and downwards at the same time. I don't think I've ever seen that. That's big. And the rain was very heavy. I'm just wondering if it's like that in Texas. It is 
not in the up and down. I don't think I could see that just because we have a ton of trees in Austin. Like there's just a shitload of trees. Right. And so you can't really see above it all the time. But there's tons of thunder and lightning and you get to see the lightning and it's cool. It lights up the sky. Pow, pow. And the rain is very heavy. It's like that crazy rain probably, Lynn. I think similar to Florida where it's oh. like hot rain. Also going up to the lake, it's really cool because you can see thunderstorms on the other side of the lake. Yeah, you can see and them you're coming. not getting rained on, you're in sunshine. But you see the storm coming over the lake and it's darkened and there's lightning. And well, like, there's wow. like, there's these little pockets I find in Texas, at least in my experience so far, where you could be like a 10 mile difference and it's like completely different weather. Yeah. So it's kind of cool that Microclimates. way. Microclimates. Exactly. Okay, San Francisco's like that too. Yeah, the Bay Area has microclimates. Yeah, I think just because of the landscape. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was going to share a story related to something that Katie mentioned in an OTDM podcast a few weeks back or more. But before I do, I need to try and explain what I'm talking about. English is not my first language, and Google Translate won't help me translate these words. So I'm on my own. When we were children, there used to be structures in schoolyards for us to play on. One of them was a rod placed on top of two legs. Okay, so straight, boom, boom. Okay. Yep, that's like, we used to have that too. It was like a like a monkey bar or something. By the way, your English is impeccable. And I would even dare say that you could write a script for a podcast and, and someone could read it on air and it'd sound perfect. So <laughs> I wouldn't have known that it was a non-English speaker speaking English, you know, so. Yeah, Linda's great. <laughs> Also, I, I know her well enough. Like, I, can, I know what she's trying to say, too. So if there are little flippy floppies, I can fix it. Right. Okay. The point with it was to lift yourself onto the rod with your hands and then swing your body around it. Yeah, we call those monkey bars, right? Yeah. Do you agree? Okay. I think so. Or monkey bars are the ones you come across, like little ones. And these were like oh, the parallel, parallel bars. bars. Yeah. Uneven parallel bars, right? Maybe. Yeah, but those types of things. But a lot of times as a kid, you just have like one of them. There'd right. be no... It was just like one bar. Sometimes you'd go to a park and that park would be better than the park that you trained at as a kid. Like for the last two years, you've been going to one park and you're, let's say five. So mm -hmm. you're used to all the toys. And then you go to another park and you're like, oh my God, this park has a lot more advanced toys, but you've learned your basic skills on the other ones. Mm -hmm. And then you adapt to a bigger park. We had like a fancy new park that got put together when oh. I was a kid. We'd raise money as a community. So I was like really spoiled. What'd you get? It had all the things. Like all the bars, all the monkey bars. It even had like a thing you could hang on to and swing, like a zip line. Oh yeah, then those it, are fancy. It had like um, a bunch of different slides and a bunch of different things you can climb. And I don't know. I mean, honestly, I don't remember now. And I know they not have torn it down. Like they tore it down, but like it was rotted and old and they're redoing it right now. That's cool. So they did another fundraiser. That'd be a great job to have. The person who gets to design parks for kids. Right? Especially nowadays, because I think they're we're really embracing that you got to have good parks. For yeah, because ours was a lot of that pebble rock and a lot of wood and a Broken lot of big glass, metal screws. Cigarette butts. No, none of that. Well, I mean, maybe there's a cigarette. Sometimes you, you'd go to a park and it'd just be a dog shit. You know, you'd go and you're like, oh, this is terrible. What a bad park. I've <laughs> never been to one Whoever like had that. to play at this park, you know. Wow. <laughs> one Montreal's sad, rough, I guess. One sad uh, basketball hoop with no rope, you know. Oh, you mean no net? A junkyard dog. No rope, no net. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, back to junkyard dog. I think you're at the junk. I think you're at a the junkyard. A kid named Michael McDougal who'll give you a, you know, a wedgie if you get oh. too close to the park. You know, one of the, it's a really shady park. You don't want to go there. I don't know of those. Okay. Back, back to the story. Okay. <laughs> um, remember the point of this was to lift your body up and like you can, uh, lift yourself around the rod with your hands and then swing your body around it. If you've not completely lost if I've not completely lost you now, I will try to proceed. We're, we're with you. We're with you. You've got us. Katie says she tried to do this on her bed when she was a child. Yes, I did. And you are correct. She said, I think she said that. Yes, Lynn, you follow. You got me. And I just wanted to say that I had a very similar stunt. So I'm not alone. Yay. Because I like broke my nose almost. I feel like, I mean, I didn't, but like I had a bloody nose. And that's actually one of the only times I've ever had a bloody nose in my entire life. Knock on wood. Okay. I've attached a photo below. I tried to do this on one of these things, though. Oh no! Okay, I have to show you so you get what she's saying. Oh no! Because like me as a kid, you're like that looks very similar to the thing in the park. Oh no! So the one on the left is the one that she tried to yeah. do it on. Okay. Okay. <laughs> as you can see, there's not one rod on her, but two. And maybe you can imagine how that attempt went. <laughs> I remember seeing that thing thinking, oh, 
Maybe I can use that as one of those swinging rods that we have at school. Yeah, good idea. That's exactly the same thought that went through my head, Liam, when I, my mom had, like, I'd gotten a new bigger girl bed with a canopy. Yeah. And it had that bar, and I was like, oh, I can swing around this too. It only had this much of an opening. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's like her thing. I'm, I'm like, Katie, Katie. Okay. <laughs> I can still feel the pain in my forehead when thinking about it. And the surprise when I hit my head into the lower rod. <laughs> Oh boy. And then the realization of why I hit my head into that second rod. Oh, I felt really stupid. I looked around, I looked around me to see who saw what I had done because I realized that I should have been it should have been very very obvious what would happen. I know when I told my mom cuz I had a bloody nose and was like, ah, my mom was like, what happened? Obviously, I heard like a thud and then like, ah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what was she thinking? Yeah, she's probably like well, at least we got one smart kid. Looked at my brother, right? Okay. Um, thank you. I hope this made any sense and that I'm, I managed to explain it. Kind regards, Lynn. It made all the sense in the world. And I totally get it. And the picture really helped. <laughs> so, and I don't know what I was thinking either. I bet you kids have been doing that throughout the history of kids being kids. You know, mm -hmm. all the way back to like, whatever, 50,000, 2 million years ago, the first hominids or whatever. You yeah, know? yeah. I bet you we've been pulling bonehead moves like that. It's just now in the advent of like mobile cameras that we're catching. It's the same thing with animals. Mm -hmm. You know, like you'll see stuff on Instagram of like a dog doing something like, damn, that dog's smart. Look at what mm -hmm. he just did. You know, they, they really get crafty or they're, they're showing love to another animal. You know, yeah, like that's cute. I always thought dogs hate cats, cats hate birds. Mm -hmm. Turns out they all get along as long as everyone is fed. Yes. True. It's when someone's not fed, they get a little testy. They do. So it's fair. As long as they're all fed, they'll hang out, and it's cool to see. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. I know what you mean. Yeah. That's Is that it. all? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yes, I think everybody's been doing stupid things like that. And I think something that's interesting about being a kid is that as a kid, I feel like our, our thinking is very simplistic, right? It's yeah. like, I swing around bar at school, that looks like the bar at school, I'm gonna swing around that. And you don't think about the fact that your top of your body or whatever you're trying to swing isn't gonna fit through right. that. In your space, you're just like, looks like the thing that I did that on, I can do that. Because I remember thinking, <laughs> and I'm surprised I remember this with such vivid detail, but I remember thinking, because it was a, like a dowel rod that had been, you know, shaped. Okay. And I was like, oh, that'll be nicer on my knee. Cause I used to put like towels down cause yeah. I put my leg over yeah. one leg and then the other leg straight and then flip, you know? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was your move? That was my move. And I was like, oh, this won't pinch as bad cause I can put the towel and it has that curve where my leg can go. How crazy is it that kids do that? Like I'm looking back <laughs> and I'm like, I understood the mechanics. As soon as you explained it, I'm like, oh yeah, we used to. We used to spin around with the greatest of ease. And so, so dangerous. I just loved it. I wonder if I could still do it now. Oh, for sure. We should, we totally should find try. the park. I totally and, oh, there's one right across. Well, my dad actually, at the time, and I don't know if it was before or after this incident, probably after, because he was probably like, we need Katie not to smash her head into the bed again. <laughs> but we had a, in the backyard, the house, my dad had built my brother and I a tree house. And off of the treehouse had monkey bars and a slide oh. and then two bars like for this. So he, those bars, one was higher and one was shorter. And I would get, I'd get on them and put my leg in. I wow, always wow, wow, wondered wow. Fam, how, bam, bam. how Nick uh, got started mm -hmm. and why he won season three of American Ninja Warrior. I didn't know that. <laughs> my brother. Oh, my God. I didn't know the origin story. Thank you, you know, for filling in. Yeah. Nick jumped, God, jumped Nick in those monkey bars. Awesome. Yeah. His moves are like. American Ninja Warrior series, uh, series three. Series three. The, the, uh, you mean season? Yes, the mm. grand champion. Mm -hmm. Katie, your brother was. If Nick's listening to this, he's like, keep keep saying it, Sean. Uh, yes, I am Ninja Warrior. Yes. Can you imagine my brother? You guys, it's obviously a lie. Okay, we have another speak pipe. Okay. From one of my favorite people, Christy. Okay. Are we ready? Here we go. Hey, Sean and Katie and hey. OTDM family. This is Christy, your Northeast Florida correspondent. Sorry, I've been kind of quiet lately, but uh, I was watching number 71 and it was all about my estate. 
alligators and airboats. So look <laughs> for an email offended. to come. Look also for wanted to say that you guys are super awesome, great. Glad you're settled in Texas now. And hopefully y'all are doing good. Mm-hmm. And I was watching a video where Katie got upset about something recently on TikTok. Oh, so yeah. you want me to punch him in the throat for you? <laughs> I do. It always makes me laugh when you say that, Katie. <laughs> so keep your chin up. You make us laugh. We love you. Much love to Sean and Katie. And bye now from Northeast Florida. And look for an email about alligators and airboats. Bye. 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 We will look for that email. I'm excited. <laughs> I thought I was going to get called out there for talking trash about Florida or something. I was like, oh, no, I hope I didn't offend anyone. Oh, no, we don't. We were just talking about like yeah. the bugs and you, you've never seen an alligator in real life. And I we're going to have to change that. But sometimes I'm like, oh, you know, no, you may she's, put your foot in your mouth. Christy's and, cool. Yeah, she is. She's super cool. Yeah. And um, thanks for wanting to punch people in the throat. Sean wants to punch people in the throat, too. I get my feelings hurt. But then I rise up and I am back at it. Can't nobody take my pride. Can't nobody hold me down. Oh, no. I got to keep on moving. <laughs> I think one of the good things about um, adding new people to our team, mm-hmm. which I'm very excited about, but it's so weird to hand off the reins in some ways. It's kind of scary. Yeah, but it's really cool when, when you pick the right people. Mm-hmm. And I think you have a really good sense of, of uh, choosing people to work with. Which is cool because in corporate America, you don't get that choice. Yeah, you can't just like go out into the world. I assemble my Avengers. (laughs) I will pick you. Well, no, but like like my friend Jared, he's been helping us and I've known him for a while and I've always liked him. Yeah, a long enough period mm -hmm. of time um, to observe somebody, uh, how they work in in his environment, which was really interesting. And I was like, I think he kicks ass. Let's see if he kicks ass. And he does kick ass. So he's been really, really helpful. So you'll notice, and then when he's trying to help us uh, upgrade our website, you know, it's just getting some things dialed in and done that Sean and I frankly don't have the bandwidth to do. And then we're trying to bring on some editing support for Sean and someone to give me like a schedule of what I need to create so that I don't feel like it's so much. Yeah. Yeah. Feels good though, but it's it also does. scary. Mm-hmm. Um, but hey, that's how we're going to be able to stay sane Pew. going forward this year. Pew. We got this. Pew, pew. I believe you when you say that. Pew, pew, pew. Finger guns and all. I just, got, <laughs> I just got two types of finger guns back to back. Boom. Boom. <sighs> We're almost caught up. Are we really? We're on to July 22nd. Perfect. I'm so excited. And even though there's a big break in there, Lynn has graced us with her presence again ah. but you just didn't know because i think it's when we told people to take a break and not send things okay and now we're back that's fine i don't mind it's kind of cool to get uh, a double header sometimes mm-hmm. because it's like oh i really enjoyed that story i want to hang more. out with them for a little bit longer like so we get to hang out with lynn man, again down the road and this isn't now mm-hmm. but like in whenever we get up to speed on the podcast i have so many ideas of things i'd like to do like i'd like to have our guests send in videos and, oh, yeah, and they yeah. could be like a report uh, a correspondent from somewhere <clears throat> this is your correspondent from what what is it christy south live from the living room is she south southeast florida is that yeah. what she said yeah <clears throat> you know that'd yeah. be really fun. it'd be great on their phone people reporting carly braverman used to do that back mm-hmm. in the day she'd be like hey guys uh, just sending a message out from yep. uh from indiana know. yeah i was like yeah. that's cool like to get to see where people are it's true um, and maybe like maybe Christoph we, would play us a tune. Yeah. He sent us in that video. Remember? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We're going to get back to that adding elements. Into but we just show. haven't, honestly, we just kind of been drowning with the like move and the work and the blah, blah. And then even onboarding people is kind of hard too, because you have to have meetings with them to let them know what you like and don't like. And like, oh, we're trying to do more of this and less of that. And, you know, they want to make sure that we're on the same page and that takes time too. But you've assembled the Avengers, Katie. Yes. And this is a badass team. I like them all. Fox Force 5. I, I like know. them all. Yeah, that's a good team. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to going into fall this year. Yeah. You know, I, it's funny, and there, this is a roundabout way of saying it, but I just say, get a sense of you being uh, a little bit more at ease over the last two weeks, even though it's been stressful. Mm-hmm. Like, I think you're also, because you're bringing more people on, mm-hmm. I think it's it's helping you uh, feel a little bit more at ease. Like, well, I'm I not like in this by a... myself. Yeah, and I feel like there's like an end in sight from feeling completely overwhelmed. Yeah. I think that's like exciting, which I think is why in even in the mental health space, like why why hope is so important. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, it's going to get better. 
I said, I just, I know it's right there. It's right there. You know, one of the most interesting things is this journey of, of building a business at the same time as filming and doing, you know, like this, yeah. we're, we run a small business from a house, you know, at, yeah. at the end of the day. And it's, it's quite interesting without a net and you know, it, it's yeah. fun, but it's, it's been exhausting. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Yeah. There's oh. our pep talk on uh, <laughs> going to business school kids. Uh, no, but I mean, get you yourself know. a good government job. Where they've got that Cadillac, Cadillac health insurance. That health insurance, man. That's mm, sweet, compliments sweet health to the government and right? the taxpayer. Oh my boy, God. oh boy. That's what we, we should go work in a government job. Mm -mm. Nope. You don't want to hang it up? Go corporate or go government, sorry. No. Yeah. I've done jobs like that. I feel like an outlaw by being an entrepreneur, though. I feel like I'm, I'm on the fringe of, you know, uh, what everyone else had to, uh, had to do. Mm hmm. It's not always rewarding either. Like there's a lot of downside to it, but I don't feel I, like an outlaw. I just no. feel like a different version of a worker. And I work more than most of my friends who have those jobs. Yeah, that's true. So I see that vision. <laughs> okay. Let's get into Lynn's letter. All right. Hey Lynn. And Good it, to hear from you again. This, the subject line reads interesting names. I am very excited. It says hello again. Forgive me for just going straight to the point here. I still have no idea what I'm supposed to write into. Oh, she still has no idea what she's supposed to write in an intro. Like, uh, what do I intro? I'm just gonna get to. The, I'm just gonna get to it. Just jump. You don't need an intro. You just jump right in. I'm sending in a story about a funny stone with an unusual name, and one about an angry baby statue. That's terrifying. Um, actually, I'm gonna squeeze in some funny translations that they have done to the names that are originally in another language than mine as well. Okay. We got a lot to cover. So here we go. This is good. There is this rock formation, and it proudly carries the Norwegian name Troll Picken. Mm. This literally means troll dick. <laughs> <laughs> he had a little troll dick, you know he's what I'm just, saying? It was a little troll he's dick. He's just a little troll dick. <laughs> Why that name? I can attach a photo below. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> you know we could market this it's a norwegian phallic symbol two mm -hmm. norwegians standing there and one of them saying you know we should we should make t-shirts and uh name this rock what do you think yeah perfect that, that's a good rock right there well, troll, troll picking yeah <laughs> troll picking put it on the t-shirt says she put the photo below photo number one that was it it looks like a giant dick and it's a norwegian attraction <laughs> and the destination of an hour-long hike Wow. Wow. But in 2017, training. something tragic happened. Someone hiked right up there, chopped it right off. <laughs> <laughs> Was it Lorena Bobbitt? <laughs> Lorena Bobbitt? You know her? She's a Norwegian woman. <laughs> oh my God. With the emoji. Chopped it right off. Oh. They used a drilling machine. Some hikers sadly found it amputated one day. <laughs> this made it sort of famous. Some say world famous, but I don't know. I said, just take a little off the top. and they... <laughs> <laughs> He converted to Judaism. What? Okay. People feared that it was lost forever and it couldn't be fixed. But the mayor was very clear. And he said, I'm quoting him now, the troll dick will rise again. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. Or something to that effect. See, this is and, funny though. Hold like, on though, wait. To... So we the troll dick will rise again and we have the Viagra to fix it. <laughs> That's good. I like Norwegians. Yeah. And they did with the help of some bolts and a helicopter and it was once again restored to its former glory. It was very hilarious. While this was going on, it hit the front page of the newspapers and we heard about the troll dick for weeks. Very entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> Bet you that guy got elected again. Right? We have the Viagra to fix it. Yeah. I'm not sure who chopped it off, but I think I remember some talk of some Christians who didn't like the name or the shape. Really? And therefore had gone up there and amputated it. Were they offended by the mythical creature, a troll? Or was it they were offended by dicks? It could be a little bit of both. They were just so angered by the the combination, the gall. Mm -hmm. we're gonna t you're going to talk about pagan rock know, formations? Creatures? Oh, yeah, pagan creatures. Like trolls, you know, I think that's probably a pagan concept. Maybe. We're not religious enough. That's why we have to start our own. 
I didn't learn the religion so good, so I'm going to make up my own there. You know? Oh, my God. We've been watching Trailer Park Boys again because my Aunt Roxanne hadn't watched it, and she thought it was hilarious. I and love when someone discovers Trailer Park Boys for the first time. For the first time, because there's nothing like that first time that you watch that first season. The first season is the best. Yeah. But it's just so funny because I forgot. I don't even remember those episodes, frankly. And I forgot how good at being dumb Ricky's character is. He's a really good actor. And he's like, yeah, because the way he has, to, it's almost the same way I felt about Michael Scott in the office. Like yeah. the way he has to say things is so incorrect and ridiculous that in order to do that, it's like a whole nother level. Cause not only are you acting, but you have to pretend that you're serious about this ridiculous sentence. And I buy it hook, line, sinker when he talks and oh, he's yeah. so dumb. You it's really it. fun. I mean, he's like, you know, I didn't learn the books. I didn't do my book learning very, what's he say? Something like, I can't even put the sentence structure together. It's just together line it, after line. And sometimes yeah. he has these monologues. He's like, that Lucy, just, I, you know, I didn't learn my book learning as good as I should have learned it in the past, but I'm going back to community college and I'm going to get my degree or it's something. It's basically and you're like, Canada's version of Shakespeare. You know, the way that <laughs> scripts are written. You're like, you can look at Shakespeare. Yes, a great author. And, oh, he's from England. So everyone's going to love him. But no, you go into the trailer park boys that's basically like the shakespeare of canada and they're funny the way the guys go someone in canada is very offended right now no <laughs> listen <laughs> listen okay on to another story yeah yeah for sure but i love the trailer park boys and if you haven't watched it i highly recommend it okay i shared this this photo the one that i'm about to share on a live stream on patreon a while ago and i just want to share it here as well there was some talk about the inner child throwing tantrums i remember this okay and it made me think about the statue that we have in, o is it Oslo or Oslo? Oslo? Oslo, Oslo, I Norway, so. the capital of Norway. Oslo, I think it is, O. O. I thought it was Slo. Oslo, Oslo? No, I don't know. I don't know, Lynn, let us know. It is one of the many statues in a famous park called, here we go. I think we've hit everything on that stupid OTDM. <laughs> Oslo, Norway. David redacted, you've got us. Okay, this famous park is called, this is probably the only one they haven't been able to check yet. Viggles and Sparkin. <laughs> although ding, I guess, ding, ding, ding. Although I, guess I did to... the like troll dick one, so I guess it kind of works too. Yeah. If you look at the second photo I've attached, it's a very angry baby. And it has always been called, or it's always been the child I imagine being inside my head when I feel like my inner child is throwing a tantrum. <laughs> oh my God, that's disturbingly human looking. It's very creepy. Oh. Why is his penis out? Where's his diaper? Maybe that's why. Where are his so parents? <laughs> why does he look so old and so young at also, the same time? <laughs> someone really, <laughs> someone really considered the lighting. I mean, this. What time of day do you think this is? Like five o'clock at night. The sun is going down. It's got that weird, like where the sun doesn't go down. Look. It looks like the fall in Canada. Or like I uh, yeah. Mm, mm. Maybe winter. <laughs> okay, nobody cares about the light, Sean. This child looks... No, but someone took the time to consider like mm -hmm. how to frame this up. This is not just snapped on your iPhone. I think that's like a... I think she probably pulled it from the internet. Oh, yeah. That's professional. But man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's who she envisions when she feels like her inner child is throwing a tantrum. That's a good one, Lynn. The statue is called Stinatogen. Hmm, or Stina... C no, Sinatogen. S i n n a t a g g e n. Norwegian is very foreign. To I me. wonder if the first word, the first part of that is child, or tagen is child. The end of it. Yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna say the end of it. The park itself is very strange because of all the stat, because all the statues are, well, there's nothing pleasant about them, so they're all like angry, upsetting, dark things. Maybe. What a sad park. There's one statue of a man holding a screaming baby. F. Um. It says there's one statue of a man holding a screaming baby after one foot, but I don't I don't think that's what she means. I think maybe under his foot or something. I don't maybe know. Holding onto someone's leg. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking it's someone holding. In onto. later years, I've wondered if the artist had had some mental problems because he must have, and that an inner child throwing a tantrum might actually have been the motivation for the statue of this baby, mm -hmm. or something not far from it. But who knows? And here are some funny or at least interesting name translations. Well, no, but before you go on, okay. um, I not all parks have to be art that's... Uh, it's happy and pleasant. Yeah. I Life mean, isn't always happy and pleasant. Boy, it, it made me think when you were describing it. I mean, that, that's cool that they uh, hire artists to create all sorts of different pieces. Yeah. You know? Cities are good for that. Like if, if you live in a town and mm -hmm. um, they're putting money into the arts, I think that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a cultural center. We're not just commerce, like a... 
a restaurant, a business, an accountant, or you know, yeah. vacuum sales company, or whatever you're into. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whatever it may be. But like your town has a little bit more. Uh, some of the taxes are going towards the arts, whether it's yeah, like theater. Seattle even does that. When somebody builds, it's an interesting fact about Seattle is that when someone builds a, I forget. I don't know if it's a new building or if they're putting X number of dollars into like it's a hotel or yeah. museum or business office building. They have to put 10% of, I don't know if it's the whole total renovation cost, but into the arts in that area. And they have to have a certain amount. That's cool. They have to have a certain amount of art that they are that are on the premises that can be seen from the street. Hmm. I like that. So, and I forget the exact, I might be messing it up. People in Seattle might be like, Katie, you're wrong. But it's something like that. There's like a certain amount. That you and have then to maybe put. you go even one step further by saying, okay, and the artwork can only be by resident artists. I think it is local. So the money goes back into, to, to make sure the artists can live in the community. I'd have to look it up, but I think it is local. Maybe artists. the artwork is paid for at a, at a higher premium because these people are artists, you know, and, but they've never had big commissions. So you're commissioning your locals with big money. Maybe your last okay. name is Biden, you know, and you're... Uh, Did you're, he have a commission? He's not an artist. He's getting like $500,000 for paintings, apparently. He's not an artist, is he? Well, that's what I thought, but I apparently he's an artist. I thought he was like a artist. politician's son, and he like did politician-y things. Right. Do you think people would be paying that kind of money for a... What are they actually buying? The Favors like with a, the government? I don't know. This sounds like a scheme. That's the big uh, stink that I, I keep Okay, let's about. move on. I don't know why you had to bring that up. Okay, because I don't know what... I don't trust him at all. Okay. Now, here are some funny or at least interesting name translations. Okay. I'm excited. Oh, but what I was going to say before you tried to bring us into the pit of despair again is that this might sound really dark to some people, but I grew up uh, really close to a cemetery. And so I... It was a beautiful cemetery. It's really beautiful. And I have to be honest, people think it's like creepy or whatever, but it was never to me just because I grew up with it. And I'm, I don't know, I've never been really been like afraid of death or thought of death as like a terrible, horrific thing. I've always just felt like it was just kind of part of life and i don't know it's just always an interesting thing to me like grave sites and things like that but there's a certain portion of the cemetery that was like surrounded by trees and it's in the center of it and it had a koi pond in the middle and a ton of art a ton of hmm. statues and everything and it was the children's cemetery it was like when people lose children oh. which is really really fucking depressing that's why i was like people are gonna be like katie why so dark but it was one of my I just got chastised for being dark a second ago but it was one of my favorite places in the cemetery because of the koi yeah and the pond and also it was like nice and shaded and they had tons of benches in there so it's it's got a beautiful aspect to it. Mm -hmm. I like that. And that, that goes back to that part that she was just describing. Yeah. I think it's nice. Like it it's fine. causes reflection. Yeah. It, you know. Did I tell, I don't know if I told them, and I'm pretty sure I told you, but as a kid, I used to take big swaths of like butcher paper and color crayons and pick my favorite stones. Like, oh, uh, and you, do you trace them? Yeah. Well, I just I do the, like where you. Charcoal impression. Kind of. Yeah. Like you take a crown and you, uh, you peel it out of its wrapping and yeah. you like, you like lightly shaded over it. Did you keep any of those? I don't know. If I did, I don't know where they're at. Hmm. That's a cool thing to do. I think that's nice. I just, it's it like, just, yeah. It's so strange. It's, it's a human recognizing that there's another human that yeah. was there. And I'd be like, I liked what you had to say here. Like, if there's a pretty quote, I would do it. Or if they had a cool design, like a flower or a heart or some kind of, like the, even the ones like the veterans had some cool things or family crests, hmm. stuff like that. I like that. Old school tombstones used to have ones where you would open and there'd be a picture of the person so you could see. You could open the tombstone? No, it's like it had a little metal, almost like a big locket. Okay. Like imagine like a locket that would be on a necklace, but like 10 times that size, like probably the okay. size of like an, I don't know, an ostrich so egg. So there was a metal piece embedded? Into the stone. So glued to the stone, maybe you're like carved a little bit into the stone. Yeah, and, and okay. then you pop it open and you can see a photo oh. of the person. It's under like thick bubble glass. I've never seen one of those. It's really cool. That's... Well, next time we're in Washington, I'll take you by there. Hmm. No? Sean gets <laughs> creeped out immediately. No, I don't. I don't, I'm actually good with it. But when we were kids, <laughs> Cousin PJ. Oh, why always PJ? Poor PJ. 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 He, well, he lived uh, next to a cemetery as a kid. And oh, I remember yeah, one I sleepover and uh, looking out the window and knowing that there was a cemetery there. And PJ, like, mentioned it haphazardly or his parents. But man, I was young. <clears throat> I'd be like five years old or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it didn't really it didn't sit in. You're register. Like, oh. yeah. yeah. Well, good, because you seem like a scaredy cat. 
<laughs> nah, I'm tough as nails, babe. Oh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> it's, it's okay. Okay, back onto Lynn's letter. And here, finally, are some funny or at least interesting name translations. Yes, bring me up. In Norwegian, Neville Longbottom's name is translated to Nihilus Langball. And Langball means long balls. <laughs> <laughs> Langball. <laughs> so he doesn't have a long bottom in Norway. He's got long balls. I'm not sure why they found this to be a be- to be better than the original name. And Dumbledore's Norwegian name means bumblebee twirl or spin. Hmm. Bum- that's funny. Dumbledore. Why? God knows, but it's better than long balls. <laughs> <laughs> There is this red devil in the cartoon Cow and Chicken that used to be on Cartoon Network. And I think his name in English is Red Guy or something. But in Norway, he goes by the name Mr. Pantless. (laughs) (laughs) Man, we got to go to Norway. Since he is jumping around on his butt cheeks and is wearing no pants. Okay, that's it. Have a nice and rest. Have a nice rest of your day, Lynn. They really do seem fun. It's really funny. Yeah. Okay, our final letter from Heather. And it's entitled three month post-op update july 25th all right we've been waiting says well i'm healing really well i'm off all of my pain meds and muscle relaxers and i'm starting pt for strength and range of motion here are my x-rays that i had taken just last week now the first pick is the flexion of neck looking down okay so let's look at that oh wow see okay okay so that's how far so so range of motion Flex of, uh huh. So we got flex of motion. Second pick is looking straight ahead. And the third pick is what a normal cervical spine should look like. And then the reversal of the curve of the spine. Yes, it's painful. My muscles are always tight and I use heat to stay calm. Okay, so second pick is looking straight ahead. You see those little new vertebrae thingies? Okay. Then that's what it's supposed to look like. And that's what hers looks like. Okay. See normal and reversed. Okay. Okay. Ooh, okay. So So it's it's flattening out the curve that's there. Uh-huh. Right here. Yeah, is it's like they're trying to Wow. What no. is it uh when you do that for is that radiology when you're doing x rays? I don't know. Imaging exactly. me- MRI stuff. I find that field of med like that aspect, mm-hmm. the machinery that's involved in medicine, yeah. Really fascinating. It and is it's really the it's really Im- interesting imaging technology uh, you know it, it's pretty wild because as a kid i grew up you know looking at comic books and mm-hmm. an, always x-ray specs x-ray specs you know you should get these things you can see <laughs> x-ray vision you know whatever and then when i see it i'm still wowed at 46 years old i see an x-ray of anything i'm it's like still like magic right well yeah because it's just not what we normally see but yet it's just below the surface right yeah totally so to to be able to to see that type of imagery. I appreciate you well, sending it in. I'm fascinated by. If you guys don't recall, um, Heather had to have her C5 and C6, I believe is what it is, completely replaced. So that's what she was going in for. And that's why in the photos you can see those new, those are completely new. Wow. I wonder what that what the material is. I don't know. Let me see if I can look up her old email. Because, um, okay, here's the one May 22nd. It says three weeks post-op. Okay. Um, and yeah, C5, C6, total disc replacement. That was easy and expected. The rest was kind of a surprise. Okay, here, sorry. And That's I, not easy to me. I'm thinking my... I know, but it was expected. It's different when you have... You know, it's like if you're going in for one thing and they're like, oh, when we were in there, we also found blah, blah, blah. And you're right. like, shit, you know? Yeah. So she also... The rest is kind of a surprise. Bilateral foraminotomy? Minotomy? at C5, C6 from stenosis, basically there's a hole, foramen, it's called, that the nerves from the spinal cord get to get to the rest of the body. And let me put it this way, the surgeon was rotorooter. So if you had a tree root get into your water pipes, you call someone to clear out the blockage. And that's what happened to me. So like a root canal mm-hmm. on, on your spinal column? Pretty much to make sure that like all the nerves the that nerves are getting to the rest of the body out. aren't getting out. So they got to trim the the roots of the or put them in the right place i'd assume jesus jesus murphy that's no seriously but then like, come then on. so we're not I, done 
just this is in case people don't know then had bone spurs which my mom has on her toe and she thinks that might be what's on your foot too but she's not a doc not a doctor had those removed from the front and back of her vertebrae yeah it sounds like it hurts and it does i'm not mincing words worst for last my spinal cord had to be decompressed the disc herniation or the bone spurs were pressing on my cord so her spinal cord is getting pressed on and that was the reason for the weakness numbness and clumsiness so okay now that we're all caught up, Heather, so that's why those pictures, those new replacements, that's what it looks like. By the way, Heather, I think it's really fascinating since you've been writing in, we've had other people mention it as well, which yes. I think is really interesting. And then because now I'm aware of it, mm -hmm. I've seen it everywhere. There's quite a bit of material running in the news about it. And uh, I saw something um, that like it was either a TikTok or whatever, and they were showing symptoms or not symptoms, but like uh how what it can do flexible your joints can be and yeah there's that one guy flinging his arm around oh I and i wondered that if one. that was what it was christina shared it but i think because she was like oh my god this is overwhelming and i remember thinking i wonder if that's ellers danlos or yeah. not it could I be any girl, number of things she was manipulating her hand and her her arm just in a, it was obviously in a rotation that i you know i can't Did your fathom. elbow just pop yeah <laughs> my elbow just popped guys just at the thought of it i was like oh god. <laughs> it was like oh Okay. my heart goes out like this is you know yeah it's a lot and like yeah. she said it's you know it is painful her muscles are always tight and she uses heat to stay calm okay well hopefully we can make you giggle a little but not enough that it hurts it says the discs are made out of different metals that's interesting it's almost like a new knee or a hip the discs i have are medtronic prestige lp one of the companies that i filmed in the past uh was medtronic oh really yeah that that's was a uh, sean another life i used to shoot a uh, medical uh, yeah. videos me medical films and so we got to see quite a few instruments oh, i didn't even put two and two together that's why i enjoyed that so much but i was just You're talking fascinated about by it so she says yes i have like twenty thousand dollars or so of metal in my neck but it's so much better than being fused yeah because i'd assume movement will get better and rate you know the whole range of motion right and your cervical spine is like is one of the it's like your most flexible part of your spine so it ends up being the most easily damaged and the one that will meet you know like also you need the range of motion to okay. like you know do do your things hmm. this surgery um says this surgery kicked was this time but I, i'm not sure that's what she means i had a whole lot of scar tissue that had to be removed so it has already grown back with a vengeance oh gotcha my voice has changed and it hurts to talk more than 45 minutes yeah probably just because of the strain on that i remember this might sound weird but my friend patrick um had it done so i realized it wasn't just me but when i had my tonsils out as an adult so i didn't get my tonsils removed till i think i was like 20 21 22 maybe and my mom came to took care of me my mom is so good she came and took care of me but anyway i had my tonsils out and as an adult and my voice changed for a while it took my voice a while to come back to normal i wonder and if I, it's like like a guitar like strings are under tension and they get out of tune because this uh, the structure of where they reside is out it's probably not good science but you know what i mean <laughs> is your book learning not so good <laughs> <laughs> but you know what i'm saying like maybe because the structure of where your vocal cords are and how taught that area I have no is, idea. If I don't. you change it, the dimensions. But the doctor said that my voice might not go back to normal. And I think it's part of the reason why I have kind of a growl, like my voice will get growly sometimes. Like I could really, um, that was kind of what it was like when I first started talking after I'd had them out. And I was like, oh no, oh no. But it's all better. We're all back to normal. Okay, enough. So her voice has changed. It hurts to talk more than 45 minutes. My arms and hands are still numb and I get these sensations like my foot falls asleep that'll take a good year to maybe come back oh yeah because the nerves because if the nerves were damaged nerve regrowth can take a while there are things um christina's husband tom had this like little hand thing that was supposed to help with nerve regeneration and it, his wasn't regeneration it was bruised i think he said but anyway i know that there are things now and i'm sure she has all the creme de la creme but things that can kind of assist with that but i don't know what you do if it's in the spine i would assume there's a lot of technologies that really wealthy people um are you know paying extra dollar to kind of advance that science you know yeah uh, because we're so smart as a or we're crafty as as a species you know yeah uh, that we're we're really pushing the boundary of what's possible and it gives me hope that as 
uh, as we go forward, the scientific community is just making massive strides. They're talking about how they're going to use mRNA vac, uh, uh, the mechanism of how they. Yeah, it's, it's like delivered. the medium with which a vaccine is given. Like we've learned about mRNA, if you guys aren't aware, which I don't know how you wouldn't. Apparently, be, I didn't learn that much because I can <laughs> hardly explain it. Right but there. mRNA is how is kind of the the medium with which they offered us the COVID vaccine. Not all of them. The J and J was not mRNA, but mRNA essentially gets into your body and teaches your body how to produce a certain thing. So it's like giving it instructions. Yep. Yep. And so they're going to use that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as as like ways to move things forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like and a, with uh, cancers and whatnot. And, well, they've and been working on mRNA vax as used as that for like ten years. They've yeah. been trying to figure out how to because as we as you guys I'm sure realize like we did that it's like super super sensitive and it has to be kept really cold and it has to be used in a certain amount of time and there's all these things that made it difficult to to be administered yeah. at a at a large scale. Okay. She also says her grip and dexterity is gone and it could take two years for that to sort of come back. Mm -hmm. So it's a long road. I'm so sorry. Having chronic illness is really a part of me now. It took me a long time in therapy to accept that this is my new norm. I know it's always hard. It sucks that no matter how safe I am, I hurt myself. Ugh. Chronic pain is my nemesis. Before my therapist retired, she taught me everything she knew. EMDR, guided imagery, self-hypnosis, and learning to listen to what my, um, what my body tells me. I never like doctors, but when you hurt and you're crying, they will listen. Hmm. <clears throat> it's good to know. I'm now getting ready for yet another surgery on August 10th. That was a couple days ago. Might as well say it to help other other women. I'm having a hyster, hysteroscopy, hysteroscopy and endometrial biopsy under general anesthesia. If this doesn't help, the next is a hysterectomy. I'm okay with it. I'm turning 42, never wanted kids. Katie, I saw the video you did with Alexa on EMDR, and I thought that you should know it helps with pain. That's good to know. Sean, you are not weak when you have cluster headaches and nerve pain. You are very lucky you can take gabapentin. I can't. I have bad reactions. Uh, okay. Sorry for being too long. I hope you aren't freaked out with the x-rays. Heather, no, x-rays are awesome and amazing, and I hope that your, you know, road to recovery is a, is a fast one. You know, I mean, I know nerve stuff takes a little bit of time, but you know, when we're kind of dealt a hand of cards where we have like a tricky chronic illness, you know, we even have other members of our community, one in particular that just got diagnosed um, with something and is having a tough time coming to terms with it because it's like, you know, again, it, it's the acceptance part I think is hard. Like when my brother was diagnosed with MS, he and his wife both had, I had a tough time. It's hard because I immediately thought this is one of the things too that I encourage all of you with chronic illness to not do is to jump to the worst case scenario. I was like, oh my God, my brother's going to be in a wheelchair. He's going to die. This is going to be terrible. I can't handle this. I don't know how to handle this. Like I felt like my dad had just died. I was like losing my mind. Um, but then I did some research and asked my brother some questions and I'm sure he was annoyed with me calling and asking questions. But learned that there are many different types of MS and the one that he has is not uh, progressive in that way. And he got tested again because we thought it might have turned into that. Okay. Anyway, I don't need to belabor this, Heather, and I know that you're having a tough time already, so we'll make this more lighthearted and positive. But sometimes it's best to not jump to any more conclusions to just do what we're doing for now, take the steps we have to take to take care of ourselves. I'm glad that EMDR is working for pain. That's fucking amazing. Um, I've also had a couple people in our community just throwing it out there, say the hypnosis worked for them. Again, you guys know I'm not a huge fan of hypnosis, but hey, if it helps with the pain, I'm down. Because I know the thing that kind of sucks about chronic pain is the dependency on opioids and things that are dangerous for right. you the doctors don't want to prescribe things i think you're making it up which is like horrible for your mental health on top of the pain and that affecting your mental health and just the the fact that you don't want to put all these drugs into your body all the time but you almost have no other way of living you know right right like you've had your cluster headaches and that the fact that like dealing with that pain can you imagine that that's like constant no i can't and and it's like horrible yeah I always feel for people. So Heather, thank you for sharing. I'm glad that the surgery, it sounds like it went well, all things considered, even though they found some other things, I'm glad that like we're coming out of it. We're feeling good. It's a you know long road ahead, but you're, take, you're using your heat pads. And I find uh, when I did my physical therapy on my chicken wing injury, the, um, the wet heat, which sounds weird, 
but like if you have a hot water bottle or something with like a damp cloth that that actually feels better to oh, me okay but anyway also random story just to end this on a funny light note laugh at me so we don't you know go to the go into the pit of despair i injured myself this week oh <clears throat> by trying to pull off leggings you know how tight they get around those ankles so tight and i was trying to pull them off in a rush because i had a hangout and i wanted to shower i was trying to get ready and i like hyperextended i think my thumb it got caught in my legging you know around your ankle there's like that band that's tighter than the rest <clears throat> of the parts of the legging i hooked my thumb in and i was trying to get in the shower so fast and i pulled it and i was like and i don't i'm not like a woo girl we've talked about this i don't scream i don't yelp i don't really i don't do those things very often and it made me yip like ah! yeah i was pretty serious ah! <laughs> and then i like tried to tuck it you know when you it's like a wound your wounded baby you're like oh no and i tried it right <laughs> like right away i was like oh no she's not broken she's still good and then i iced her but ice didn't seem to make any bit of difference and then i even meant to ask my cousin amanda because she does that's like her specialty is like hands and arms i forgot but anyway i know she'd probably say just rest it and like tape it to your other hand or something but no 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 uh what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to tape it to your forehead baby <laughs> and no just... but the other night you whacked your hand into it and i was like I know. I, I felt yipped so bad. again. You did, and I was like, "Oh, it's still very tender." She has been. She's been pulled farther away from her other friendly fingers than she needed to be. Yeah. And so she's still in recovery. <laughs> <sighs> the ways you hurt yourself when you're in a rush. So my, I guess, in ending, you know how old, like my serendipity books that I was talking about a long yeah. time ago, they end with a moral of the story. The moral of the down. story is, don't move too fast. Yeah. You gotta slow Take your, your roll. time, slow your roll. Yeah. Just slow your roll. Slow your roll. You don't fall down as much. I wouldn't have, you know, hyperextended my thumb mm -hmm. in such a way that it made me. It's yip. actually good advice for me. Yeah. You do do things in a rush and then you hurt yourself or you break things. We're not in a race. You know, nope. as someone wise once told me, hey, hey, we're not in a race. Okay? Who told you your so dad? Then, oh, probably like a lot of people. But yeah, I think I heard it from my grandfather, my dad. I've heard it from you. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're like, whoosh, Hey, chief, this isn't a race. Hey, chief. Hey, buddy. Hey, my buddy. <laughs> hey, um, ballerino. <laughs> no, uh, what was it? made me think of. It's not a race. What's the movie? I forget what it's called, but it's the guy who plays, uh, fuck, Monk, the main guy. Oh, he's so good. But he's in that and he's like, uh, is it a race? Did I win? Do you remember that movie? It's called, I think maybe it's called The Race. I have to look it up. Anyway, one of my favorite things, there's this guy in The Race. It's essentially a race with regular people and not all of them should be in any race because they have no business racing. And one of them just has narcolepsy. So he just falls asleep all the time. <laughs> and so he falls asleep. <laughs> and he wakes, he wakes up when the race is over and he's like, is that race? Did I win? And they're like, no, you you fell asleep like 10 minutes in. It's like something Larry David would write. It's a race. Nobody should be in the race. We're just going to go out. We're going to race a bunch of regular people and we're going to see who wins. You're like, that's the script? Oh, yeah, it'll be funny. It'll be funny. Don't worry. Everybody will like it. Yeah. No, that's not it. It's not called race. Okay, you guys, I have to look this up. Um, he was in Taxi. Yeah. No, not Taxi. Wings. He was in Wings. That was, <gasps> I think, the first time I saw him. Oh, my him. God. Chalupa. There's a video. Oh, of that's course, Mr. Of Bean. Course. Oh, it is Mr. Bean. You're right. It's not Tony Shalhoub. I'm sorry. I was wrong. Ah, you know, they look so similar. These comedians. Oh, oh, damn. It's starting to play something else. I need it to stop. You. But anyways, <laughs> Rat Race. Rat Race. Oh. And I think we should watch it again. It's so ridiculous. I don't think I've ever seen it. And sorry, it is Mr. Bean, not Monk. My he bad. did something one time that made me laugh so hard. And oh, he says, it's a race. I hope a, I win. It's a race. I hope I win. That's how he says it. There's a girl I know uh, oh, that yeah. used to hang out with my sister uh -huh. and I knew her from high school and she used to hang out with PJ. Her mm -hmm. name was Marissa. I won't say her last name. Hi, Marissa. Yeah. Uh, she used to do a Mr. Bean trick oh. where she would put her bathing suit over her pants uh -huh. and then she'd get out of her pants. Oh yeah, he did that because he didn't, yeah, it was like his way of like sneaking out without people. But she learned that trick and it That's was so fucking funny. hilarious. She did that. We were all, there was like, 30 people at a campfire and she pulled that stunt and people were howling like what a performance it, you know? it's quite a performance yeah, it's he's funny mr bean he is uh, very rowan funny. atkins I yeah rowan uh-huh 
Rohan. 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 I think it said Atkins. Yeah. Yeah. He he's brilliant. It's he so. He's fun. like a Peter Sellers. He is. It's, it's very phys- It's like physical humor. His character never. It's brilliant because his character doesn't actually say that many words. Maybe a, a couple. handful. Like in this, it's like it's a race. I want to win. And therefore. Yeah. It's easy for anyone in any other language to understand. We all want to laugh. Mm-hmm. We all want to laugh. We want to have a good meal. You and want to be around so your friends. He's so expressive with his mouth. He'd be like, <gasps> Yeah. Or when he eats something he doesn't like, he's like, I mean, it's so good. He, he's I, such a, a great actor for everyone. Yeah. You know? He's so universal. Good. So I, I highly encourage Rowan, we love you. We miss you. Call us, baby. <laughs> we, Let's make a movie. <laughs> we miss what, do we, you. what if we raise the money for your next Who film? Who talks like that? You sound like you're one of those cheap Hollywood producers <laughs> with like extra rings on their fingers and something. Bobby Bowfinger. That is the best film. <laughs> but yes, if you need a giggle, watch Rat Race and let me know what you think about it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, have a wonderful weekend. Thanks for joining us. That's all we got for you. That's all. And that's the truth. <laughs> what she used to say that's the best okay all right bye Bye.